All right. And just like that, here we are. Boom. Live. From guys, Wisco. Welcome to Mom Loves Crush Live with co-host Epic Eric. Another lovely Monday. This time I'm from coming at you live from the parents' basement in Winnie County, Wisconsin. It looks a little different this time, man. Well, it looks a little different. What's going on? Nothing. I literally changed. I'm I'm down here in the in the basement where there's basically a wood burning fire. Yeah. 30 feet to my left. It's roasting down here. I probably shouldn't be wearing this, but uh you probably shouldn't be wearing that vest, man. No, I had yeah, a, I have a makeshift desk in front of me. If I showed you it, I mean here, let me spin around just so you guys yeah, know what I'm working yeah, with. Here. Yeah, let's see. I'm let's gonna show you my setup for tonight. All okay. right, cool, cool, cool. By the way, cool. that up there, this is my old dog. Uh oh, that's, yeller. That's that's Trebo up there. Let me show you. Trebo. There he is. Wow, okay, what a so great here's, picture, here's what I'm looking at. Here's my view. This is a little okay. makeshift desk. You see, All we got right. like, uh, you know, bed sheets over the chairs down here. I'm yep. literally just sitting here <laughs> <laughs> down in the basement for real. Yeah, you really are in your parents' basement down by the river. Is there any yeah, snow I'm on the ground, man? I'm warrior down in, the ba in my parents' basement. Yeah. Are, is there uh, is there any snow on the ground in Wisco right now? Very little. Um, it's, wow. It's, yeah. So. It's been a interesting year, I guess, up here. Yep. Yeah. Um, there, there is some snow. There's, there is some ice as well. I was able to get out ice fishing. I kind of got addicted to it. I don't want to, I don't want to give up too much information because my buddy actually uh, kind of shared with me some things. So, mm. uh, well, he took me to sort of a community area, but then he there's another area where he's like, I'll never take you. And I get it. He'll never take oh. another soul. It's that good. Wow. That's and incredible. And his his theory was he never really wanted to. Um, he's like, if somebody, if I see somebody in this area, you know, next yeah. year or the year before, I want to have it in my head. Oh, Travis or one of my buddies, you know, was talking. And I respect that. Even though I took him to the best smallmouth shipwreck around here and show <laughs> right, him that right. four years ago he can't show me his best uh uh burbot burbot hole that's what we're catching believe it or not what is a burbot dude so i don't I, i've never even I, heard I, of a burbot i, I tried to it? explain this to my dad because he What's didn't know so okay so it's kind of like a freshwater cod it's an eel pout burbot you can call it eel pout um, snout eel pout snout name. Yes. I remember uh, that eel, name. Eel pout snout. Uh, it's what I named Seth Fighter's mustache. Eel yeah. pout snout stash. <laughs> Got I it. won the contest. Yeah, yeah. There you go. Yeah. yeah so, I so what happened was, um, there's there's something called a dogfish, Eric, or a lawyer. Yeah. Okay. Um, and then, like we have on the eastern shore, you have snakehead. So, yeah. snakeheads, lawyers, and burbot kind of look very similar, and so people think. They're all kind of like trash fish or junk fish, but uh, the this freshwater, the burbot, um, are delicious. I actually uh, we caught we caught a bunch. So day one, I went out when I got here and we got into them. Yesterday, I went out with my dad and son and we got into them. And our and then the day before, I was out with my buddy and uh, we were just having a blast, which is great. Um, you know, I've been trying to do a lot of ice fishing back in in upstate New York and, and we've been catching some perch and whatnot, yeah. but I was never able to like get my walleye rods out and, and really like a heavier stick and just try to, you know, have some fun with some bigger fish. Yeah. And these, uh, these burbot were a blast, man. I got a good Tasty. workout. It's, it's sight fishing, right? Um, Whoa, that's crazy. And dude, it's on, what are you catching it's on? on? It's on soft plastics. It's on like a, a, a two and a half inch, Get bit baits, uh, white tube. Uh, what do you catch? A, a, a white tube, but I mean, like you're shallow and you're looking you're, at them. You're shallow in the water. and you're shallow enough where it's you know three feet of water, so you can no see the way. Bottom. Yeah, right dude. now. Yeah, and so you you drop the so another thing like a three inch Kai Tech Easy Shiner oh, or yeah. even a white a little white grub. So any sure. small small like plastic curly tail anything. Drop it down there, and you basically just give it little hops off the bottom. Yeah, and then. All of a sudden, a, a burb is going to come in, and uh, and they're funny. Picture? What's that? You got a picture of one? Uh, it's on my Instagram. I did a story. I don't think I have. I have to see your story. I didn't I'm take see what any... this thing looks like, man. That's crazy. 
Yeah. Let me see if I can, I can definitely show you a picture real quick guys. And then, uh, that's wild, man. Let's do a roll call. Let's see. Let's see what's up. Don, I don't see it on your story, bro. Must have been must have been a few days ago, man. Yes. Let's see. Was. That's right. Dexter's Lure Lab. Thank you, man. Well, there's Smash. a there's a few of them that we that we cleaned. Dude, that is wild looking, but it's tasty. Like, is that the best eating fish in the lake? I'm gonna say it was really good. So you boil them, you boil them for two minutes, and you dip them yeah. in uh, butter, just like uh like yeah, like a shrimp. How big yeah. are they? Uh Six the inches, burbot? eight inches. Yeah. Fish? Yeah. yeah, dude. They're they're big. You only gotta cook them for two minutes. Little and pieces their flesh of the is I cut them in small oh, pieces. Oh, okay. I got it, got it, got it. Yeah, so like yeah, shrimp yeah. and you're dipping them in butter. Oh my god, that's gotta be easy. Mm. Sounds tasty, man. It's let's it's, see what we got in the house tonight, bro. Very addicting. Yes. We got E Stack, John Hogue, Brian Wisniewski, Darius King crank baited today, <laughs> caught a couple on a Marty Burns. TK Stanley custom painted. I think it was a uh, SB1, maybe. John uh -huh. Hogue's in the house. Burn for Sarah. Lee, what up? What up? Who's new tonight? Gino, St. Crest, Doug Stewart. Man, a lot of people here. Is there anybody new tonight that showed up? Yeah, let Let's me see. know. And Mac, know. Mac Let's says it's them. burbot mating season. That's exactly what's going on. Blows my oh, mind wow. that there's fish spawning under the this ice. Temperature. Right that's yeah. crazy, dude. That's so yeah. wild, man. What a uh -huh. cool experience. That's Anyways, nice. I'm addicted. I'm going to try to get out a few more times. Did you shoot any video? No, um, not yet. It's been very windy conditions. Um, uh -huh. Not that. So I'll, I'll tell you a quick story, and then we're going to get into the live. I, I just right, got a lot right. going on. So uh, I brought a, I, I bought a otter hub. So a hub is an uh, ice fishing shack, right? But it's yeah. not like it doesn't have like the uh, – it's just an open shelter. And yeah. it has like uh you can pop it up quick. So you ever see a tent that's got the springs and you yep. push the thing and it of course. pops out. Yeah. All right. Right. So, so yesterday in the wind, um one of the sidewalls decides to collapse in as oh. I'm sitting there jigging for uh for my burbot, and it hit me right up in oh. here. Oh like and huge bruise. Uh oh my gosh. I was kind of dizzy, felt like I got, you know. I don't Maybe know. Maybe a concussion. Bad. That's bad, dude. Ooh, concussion. I didn't even think of that. Yeah. When did this happen? Yesterday. Maybe I, that's I, why I, I'm all happy right now. <laughs> <laughs> maybe not, that dude. maybe it's that helps. I see in the comments, some... everyone's like, oh, you got your your groove back. Or uh, I don't know what somebody says. Yes, because I'm finally fishing again. But yeah, there you anyways. Go. Awesome, man. Awesome. Yeah. 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 What about you? Cool. What's new at the Bass Lab? Man, what is new at the Bass Lab? Not a ton, man. I've been organizing for the past couple of weeks and uh, finding some real treasures, which I've been posting on my story. And uh, it's amazing. Some of the things I found, like original packages of power bait. Uh-huh. Like, it realized how old that is, right? Came out in 1988. Yeah. Wow. 1988, dude. That's crazy. The one unopened pack of the OG stuff. Uh huh. It's pretty cool. It's pretty cool to see what I was fishing back in the day, and probably sure. deconstructed. I don't know a decade worth of stuff. I would like put little bags together for tournaments. Man, never deconstructed them. Just put another bag together, and another, and another, and another. And so pulling all that stuff out and finding some real treasures and gems, man. So, wow. yeah. yeah, very good. Yep. Yep, yep, yep. Cool, cool. Well, we got an exciting show coming up, guys. Uh, we've had them on before. It's been a while, probably over a year now. Um, yep. We have uh, we have Dan and Ryan with St. Croix Rods, and we're going to talk a little bit about some of the new exciting things going on at St. Croix, but we're also going to talk fishing. I know last time they were on, I'm guilty of it. Um, I ended up buying a bunch of stuff that I, I felt like I uh, I needed, and, and – uh, uh, it was good talk. You remember yeah. some of the conversation oh, last time? It's fantastic. Great fishing talk. Great rod talk, man. I yeah. wanted to develop the Lucky Slevin uh, line of uh, St. Croix rods for the co-angler. That won't be needed anymore because all you'll need is three spinning rods and a portable live scope unit. There I did go. make that prediction and rant. Uh, with the stripper cornfield pole in the front and the portable unit in the back for your co. Well, we're gonna, we're it happened. Do you realize... That there was a guy that brought a portable unit in, in the an open. Open. Yes, yeah. happened. That's fine. Yep, I love it, man. Good for yeah. them. 
More bring power it, to bring it. it. Bring it, bring it. Everybody, right. man. Get the thing like a radar station. Well, hey, let's uh without further ado, let's bring the uh the boys on. We got Ryan Teach and we got Dan. How are you guys doing tonight? Uh oh, uh -oh. Ryan. Volume. Volume, Ryan, volume, volume, volume. Dude, yeah, I have been absolutely yeah. laughing my rand off over here thinking about you getting KO'd by a hub. Oh, <laughs> yeah. That's it no knocks good. him happy. It knocks him joy into him. This is the happiest he's been <laughs> in no way. literally six months. Whatever. It must be either the St. Croix guys, let's call it that, or that hub knocks some joy into the guy. It I love it. Have been. Yeah. It could have been. <laughs> it is. Yeah, those, uh, those bourbon are something else. They're fantastic to eat. Have you ever gotten into some or really? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. They're kind of a tricky devil to clean, but because they got a, mm. that weird rib cage, but no. uh, yeah, they're fantastic. Sure. Now, what do you do with, uh, I guess, your techniques? Uh, is it ice fishing or open yeah, water? Yeah, you run, you run into them uh, by mistake sometimes when you're going after a lake trout. Okay. Yeah, Ooh. they're all about like, like you said, the whole white tube and lake trout are all about white and pink tubes. And every now and okay. then you'll, okay. you'll screw up or, you know, like in some lakes you'll get, they'll like, you know, offshore, you know, that late fall, early winter pattern when smallmouth go super deep and get in the sure. deep holes, you'll find them in some lakes up by us. So you'll Very come cool. you'll come to them then there too. Damn. Perfect, man. Yeah. It Thanks was a uh, critter, man. Mm. It's, they're, 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 they're nothing thinking. to mess around with. Aggressive. Got me one to eat a bourbon. <laughs> bourbon. <laughs> I want to try one. I'll bring. Do they some. serve it in restaurants? I, I don't think so. Not in, not intentionally. <laughs> yeah, I was about to say. I mean, it's not a pretty fish. It looks like an orange ruffy, but skinnier and <laughs> yeah. longer. I mean, it's like a snaky little devil, man. Who knew it would be so tasty? Dan's super into sushi. He might have had like sushi bourbon at one point in time. Mm. Oh. <laughs> oh, man. Yeah. I don't know about that. Sashimi. Sashimi. <laughs> so bourbon so Ryan, sashimi. what do you what have you been up to? I assume you're are you uh are you at home right now? Are you traveling? No, I'm at home right now. Um the uh honestly our winter up here has been like a completely polar opposite from you guys in the east. Our winter up here has stunk. Like it's been yeah. It's just been super, super mild. Our ice has been really sketchy. I mean, where mm. Dan's at, you know, 300 and some miles south of me, um, it's been a completely different different deal. But even then, ice has still been a little sketchy. But it's wow. been, yeah, it's been a weird, it's been a weird winter. There's been a ton of, you know, I'm in northern Wisconsin, like 30 miles from our factory. And, uh, you know, there's been a ton of ATVs, UTVs, shacks through the ice. Because it's just no. weird. I mean, we just got, we've got uh. super... Super unpredictable winter up here. El Nino. Duh. Exactly. No, right? No, El no snow. <laughs> you know, exactly. No, no snow, little ice, <laughs> super unpredictable. Um, you know, our tourist mm. season here in northern Wisconsin is based off of, you know, ice fishing, snow milling mm. during the winter. And oh, uh, snow milling has basically been non-existent. So, wow. Yeah. So, we've got yeah. – there's a lot of people up here that are itching for spring because, as far as I'm concerned, Why it can not? happen at any time. That's exactly right. I'm yeah. ready. It's going to come quick, guys. I mean, it's going to be March before we know it. And it's going to uh, come really quick. It did. It, it truly, truly flew by. Dan, where are you located tonight? Yeah, I live in southeast Iowa, and I got out ice fishing one time three weeks ago, smoked a bunch of big bluegills on a farm pond. I got lucky to get in. I just landed on them. It was so cool. Uh -huh. We had two feet of snow the week prior to that. Now our lakes are wide open. What? I keep yeah. wide open I, I keep my boat on lake ozarks which is only four and a half hours south of me i'm headed there wednesday night fishing thursday through saturday and it's supposed to be 65 degrees and the shad will be halfway back in the creeks and what the it's, heck it's it's a crazy dynamic right now man but it's just yeah it's been pretty cool oh what oh my gosh that's awesome i mean i mean it's good and bad right i mean yeah. <laughs> open water you can go fishing four days in a row that's well, crazy. I don't get to do that often. I took some vacation here, but I'm going to go down and hopefully get some, get some string stretched, catch some crappies. I got to get a couple limits of crappies and I'm going to do a bunch of bass fishing too. So nice. looking forward to it. Nice. Heck yeah. This was my first, uh, I guess, winter season. Cause for those that, I mean, a lot of you guys know that are watching this. I, I used to ice fish a lot and I, you know, really this year was trying to get into it a lot more. And, uh, 
I just so happen to have the uh, the custom ice rod here. This is the tungsten tamer. Um, I was using the for those bourbon. I was actually using the. Uh, I think it was. Gosh, I can't remember which rod it was. It was. It was one of the. Uh, the uh, what's the one? The deep. I guess a search for walleye. What's the, wow? I'm trying to think. Yeah, there's the outside eye. There's the uh, search bait. Search there's bait. The, yeah, yeah, there's a deep spoon. Yeah. Yeah. A lot of guys are using the uh, the trophy taker as well, which is the okay. real big one. Yeah, but this has been my first year, actually. I mean, I'm not going to lie. I grew up using whatever cheap rods we, you know, bought at Fleet Farm, right? It's a huge difference having, like, a real ice rod in your hands compared to what I grew up using. And this was my first real year of, of doing that. And it's a lot, it's a lot more fun fighting the fish and, and presenting baits when you have the right – the right setup so i wanted to Agreed. just yeah it's uh is that a saint croix ice rod i didn't yeah, catch dude. that okay yeah. gotcha gotcha i had a chance to fish a saint croix i had the chance to fish a saint croix on lake ontario with matt pangrak from bass talk live and travis manson but he only had two ultralights from saint croix so i got the bass pro shops one yes and i did. still caught him man i was really <laughs> upset that he would not get, he just would not let go of that St. Croix. That's how powerful those rods were, man. I, uh, so, that I was remember. a fun day, man. That was a that great was perch day. fishing. I didn't expect you guys, I didn't expect us to go perch fishing that afternoon. It was a blast, man. Yeah. I mean, are you kidding me? I used yeah. a really, I used a smidge and I was cutting bait from a Max Scent uh, that was on the mm -hmm. ground. It was a flat nose minnow. And I'm mm -hmm. like, you know what? I don't need any worms. And so I put that <laughs> little piece on there and threaded it on the hook. And it, you caught him. I caught him. I caught him, man. That was uh, that was my shining moment. Didn't have uh -huh. the right rod. Did you catch any? Did you guys catch any big perch? Like, mm -mm, not that know. day. Uh, did we catch some big ones? I, thought, I, I thought, know what's what's a big perch on Ontario. Uh, like a good, I don't know, just the jumbo perch. Like, okay, it's like that twelve uh, inches, 13, 14. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think we caught some. Sure, but there were a lot of little ones too. Mm -hmm. But that was fun. I didn't care. It was fun jumping right. on some stuff. Yeah, it's it's perch one perch. of the only places in the country that I know doesn't have a limit for perch for one. Um, That's amazing, and it's more of a they buy perch at the gas stations. You know, you can fill a bucket of perch and sell it to the the people there. So you literally can. <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah. It's, That's I think it's so two cool. Yep. No way. Mm -hmm. Get yourself some gas. That's cool. Perch for gas, man. <laughs> we'll we'll fish for food. Uh -huh. We've got the whole uh we got the whole giant perch thing going on in the UP of Michigan, up uh sure. not that far from where I'm at. But then we've got a number of people that work at St. Croix that head west and go to Cascade and uh and do uh, the whole Cascade Lake. That's a no limit lake out there, and that's stupid. Those perch, mm -hmm. I mean, nuts. <laughs> like, it's the best yeah. eating fish. So where I live in Maryland. There's a tributary of the South River, which gets to be salt, it leads into the Chesapeake Bay. But there was this little feeder creek. And when I was a kid, man, literally those perch would run up that creek and spawn. And the best meal I ever had was fresh caught yellow perch, took them back to my buddy's house. His mom, we filleted them. His mom cooked them up with some home fries. And I'm telling you, man, I can still remember that meal today. It was uh -huh. just so freaking good. Unbelievably good. Hey, tasty yeah. tasty fish right there mm -hmm. so guys so let's talk about some of the uh some of the new things coming out of st croix no if you guys follow anything from st croix on instagram and some of the people that that represent the uh their product you would see some teasers that were being put out some talk of a new lineup of rods is there anything we can share uh today tonight ryan or uh yeah we can we can talk a little to and, it and, and um dan We've we've got a we've got a release that'll happen at the classic. Uh, honestly, this project Dan's been there since day one on it. Um, it's been a it's been a kind of a how should I put it? It it's been one of those where you just beat your head against the wall at some point in time um, during it. Uh, but one of the things that came off it was the release of Mojo Bass that we did last year with the Trigon handle. Um, everybody kind of asked us and they kind of poked at us. They're like, "Well, if Trigon is so good." you know, why'd you release it at the Mojo Bass price point? We're like, oh yeah, ha ha, you know. Um, but it was really, Trigon was supposed to come out on this project. Um, and it, this project got delayed because we've been working on something that uh, is very unique 
to the industry or will be unique to the industry. A couple, a couple unique pieces. Uh, I'll actually, I have one of the rods. So, oh, all right. Mm. Yeah, it's, here we all go. Right, so here is, I'm, I grabbed this one. This isn't the correct color one, um, okay. but I grabbed it just because it's easier to show some things uh, on screen here. So one of the unique things about this rod you're going to hear a lot about is this little devil back here. Um, this is a rear trigger. So rear trigger in a casting and a spinning rod. Obviously, this does not help you when you're flipping. Um, mm. But I will tell you that casting accuracy with this combined with Trigon because of the shape of Trigon and the uh, triangular shape. Uh, this it's going to sound like, you know, marketing speak, but I s swear to God, it's the honest truth. It really takes your casting accuracy to really the next level. Um, so like when I double hand cast and I grab that back part. <laughs> yeah, because like, it, it gives you this like confidence of holding on to the rod and then also yeah. being like appropriately tight and casting. We've had more conversations about casting accuracy than ever before because of live sonar. You know, when you're, you know, if you don't have crappie breaks or if you, you know, you see a group of fish out at 80 feet and the wind isn't right or you're moving too fast or you're shining fish over, you know, suspended fish over deep water and you got like one shot to get them, you know, land it in the cone. I mean, that's like half the battle. <laughs> I mean, like if you can see it and you can get it in the cone and you can start to present to fish, then you know where your lure is at so you can present right. So casting accuracy, um, it's it's really, it's really, it's a weird ex like oh, it's a weird experience when you first start to fish it. You know, Trey McKinney, um, one of our Elite Series guys, is going to fish his first ever Elite Series tournament here coming up. You know, I think he said it best. You know, and and Dan, maybe you want to expand on it a little bit, but he's like, it's just there. Like the rear trigger, once you have it, it's kind of like it's just like it's just there. You come to depend on it. Huh. Yeah. yeah, I was helping him pick his rods for his upcoming elite season, and Trey's, Trey's a mega hammer for his age. I mean, he's light years ahead of, of most in terms of techniques and the why and, you know, line stretch, line visibility, hook gauge, tip deflection, all these things that, you know, usually you're talking to guys our age about that stuff and the kid's 17. Uh, in any case, I was asking him, you know, what do you want? What do you want? And he was talking about some different LPAs or length powers and actions. And he goes, man, I want that rear trigger. I want that rear trigger. Cause he played with it for quite a while. And I go, why Trey's got this kind of Southern Illinois accent going on. <laughs> and so he goes, he goes, it's just there. It's just there. I go, what do you mean? It's just there. He goes, it's just there. He goes, it's right. It's right. And I'm thinking, what's that <laughs> word? And I, and I found out he meant correct. I mean, he, he, he says it's just in, I guess I can enable, I can relate a little bit being a golfer and understanding the pressure on the left hand in the golf swing as a right-handed player. And then in the casting, it's the, when you're casting this thing as a right-handed caster, it's the same thing. That left hand is an off hand. It's a guide hand. It's a support mm -hmm. hand. It's a push and pull fulcrum type scenario. And it's just there. You, you get it, you get it right. You don't have to over grip it. It helps the rod cast oh. itself. And yeah, it's super exciting stuff. So I, I'm, uh, I can't wait for a lot of anglers to get this in their hands for sure. Travis, how would you use that trigger? So I don't have, you don't trigger. cast exactly that way. Well, <laughs> I didn't have to see, I have a, unusual, All right. well, we're talking spinning rods. Yes. I, yeah. there's nobody that I've seen cast the way I cast, but uh -uh. it is <laughs> unusual. I don't know, man. Stop picking on me. Uh, I know. I'm just wondering how you would use it. I don't know. I don't know. I would just, I, you know. Yeah, I, I know. know. I know how you do it. You, I got, like you got the control. You guys know. You got, I don't. You, I you cast can, rod. I I've watched Travis line, cap. I hold the line here, and I cast yes. this way every time. No I kidding. Cast, I no cannot. Kidding. I cannot. I don't know how you guys flip a bail and hold the line in your hands. That's. <laughs> I could not do that. It's foreign. But that's, the left hand is his guy. I, thing. I watched him cast backwards and hit a pile of, like right oh, yeah. next to it. The dude's money. He can hit a casting ring. Make no mistake. So. Oh, I'm sure. That's cool. I've seen a few <laughs> people do that for uh -huh. sure. Yeah. So you guys do it with a I think a, Yeah. I, I think a lot of it in trapping it with the right index finger, like most of us do. I don't have a rod here in the office, uh -huh. but I think a lot of it is making sure you don't get your finger too forward. Cause you get the angle yeah. coming off the spool, the line will jump off your finger, but if you yeah. get the finger back. I'm not saying, you know, straight down to the handle in front of the bail roller, but yeah. it can be slightly forward. But 
what 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 a lot of us like about casting that way is not only can we actually actually release it at the apex of the swing and let it go, but if you want to shut it down, you just trap it. So yeah. in terms of your distance, if you're trying to hit rip rap and you know be an inch from the rock, you just take yeah. your index finger and stop it from going out. But it it's you know crazy. obviously Travis, you're very successful doing it the I'll way you're doing it. Able to, I'll actually stop it with my with my he left does. hand. Yeah, you're he you're feathering it down, tethering it down. Yeah, yep. yeah, I grabbed the line with my left hand to feather yep. it for sure. Okay, so yep. he's already there at the beginning of the cast. He, yeah, he's yep. the one that's doing it right. Have you ever thought of that, Travis? <laughs> there you go. <laughs> oh man, perfect. I don't know. I, you know, I'm really curious about that trigger for like bigger baits. Like, is that going to be on the entire lineup for like swim baits as well? Yeah, it's on the entire lineup. So there's 20. The first release will be 25 models, um, and then. There's a there's a seven six casting rod, medium heavy, moderate fast. Uh, that's been it's been termed the mag draft rod in the group. Um, there another guy you that was what really, I'm talking about. Yeah, another guy that was really integral with this whole process was Patch Slopper, another one of our elite series guys. Uh, sure. There's been a number of people that have had them in their hand. This rod's been series has been out in testing for quite a while because uh, this is proto again. This is one of the prototype ones, but. Um, this is carbon fiber. So we have a carbon fiber reel seat. It's a, it's a molded carbon fiber reel seat. Can you get it and close then, to the camera? Can you get yeah. that reel seat close to the, Thank you. Yep. So That's it's a molded really carbon nice. fiber reel seat and then molded carbon fiber handles on front and then also the back. Um, wow. so typically, so this is, this is the, the unique part. Typically we all think of carbon fiber always having to have that like checkered look, yeah. you know, like those stickers you get from Amazon yeah. if you want to you know, make your hood scoop on your Civic look really cool, yep. you know, but in order to do that, you always had to wrap it around something. It had to be circular. Um, hmm. So with molded carbon fiber, which has actually been in a lot of different industries, it's been in archery, it's been in skiing. Um, not sure if it's been in golf, but it's been definitely in archery and it's been in skiing um, for a long time. It's always been there, the ability to make a mixture um a specific mixture of carbon fiber, put it in a mold um, and then make any shape you want out of it. It doesn't have to be circular. Um, so you can get, you can get the trigon triangular shape. Um, but the other thing is, and this is, this is probably one of the bigger refinements that this project took from start to finish was, do you see these red lines in here? Yep. yep. Okay. That isn't a sticker. <laughs> it's not cosmetic. <laughs> um, it's TPU. And what it is, is, they're grip lines. So mm. the big challenge was, and we learned with Legend Extreme pre-2021, the old version of Legend Extreme is that that handle would get slippery. Mm -hmm. um, so Legend Legend Extreme, the new version, has like the random randomized like, like dots on it for grip. Oh, yeah. um, this one is a more uh, strategic placement. Now it's strategically put on here for your hand contact, but also just enough that it doesn't screw with the sensitivity of the rod. Because if you put too much on it, it dentons the vibration that's transmitted from the rod or yep. transmitted throughout the rod. So this has just enough uh, where it aids in your ability to grip onto the rod, but it doesn't hurt the sensitivity factor. So that's very interesting. So like what's the difference in sensitivity between the molded carbon fiber in a cork handle? <laughs> like, I mean, have you done, yeah. I'm sure you've done tests or you have some information. It's, I'm really it's fascinated by it. Yeah. So this rod, when it comes out at the classic, it's going to be, um, it's going to be price pointed right between Legend Tournament and Legend X. So it's like right in between them. Uh, it has an SC4 plus blank. Legend Extreme has an SC5 blank. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, this rod series has titanium frame guides on it. SIC mm -hmm. inserts in it. Um, nice. So super, super durable guide platform. It doesn't have the carbon guides on it that Legend Extreme has. Um, and in sensitivity testing, it's about one to two maybe three percent in some models less sensitive than extreme so mm. i will tell you that the rod is ridiculously sensitive and that's because you can make the handle so ridiculously rigid it's very there's, interesting there's just no squish to it it's mm -hmm. very very rigid uh kind of like the aha moment for me and I came back and talked to the first one of the first prototypes we had out that was in the final material form we had it out and couple guys fishing in front of my boat and we're throwing this little hazardon shad on yeah. a drop shot to Ooh. fish that we were essentially sniping over open water that was suspended and you could throw it out there and you could feel the paddle tail on the back of the hazardon shad it was going down what? that is that's ridiculously crazy. cool 
And all of a sudden that's you don't good. feel the paddle tail anymore. And you look down and your line's going, eh, going uh-huh. the other direction. That's it's like, okay. Stuff, man. I was like, all right, we might be, we're onto something here. So it took some refinement. Um, yeah. We're, I'll drop a link to uh, kind of a video that just got leaked today. Um, but it's been, this project has been a long time coming. So, man, that's awesome. When I was a kid, my favorite rod on the planet was a bull whip from Shimano. Sure. And it was a continuous, you remember how it was, it widened out at the handle? Like my hand touched the blank, but in a very comfortable way. Mm-hmm. So, I love to have that fingertip on the blank. And I mean, that's, I think that's what you're providing. There's no cork in the way to limit the sensitivity. That's a, that's pretty amazing. So there's one thing to keep in mind. Um, You know, a long time ago, people used masking tape as shims on the inside of rods. Um, Believe it or not, it's still done today. So a lot of people are like, you go, you went away. Like this rod is less sensitive because you can't put your finger on the blank in the real seat. That's your rod is only as sensitive as your shim. So it's like you can build the greatest looking, coolest rod and you can expose the blank. But if your shim material is 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 not good, um, then you completely lose your sensitivity. If you use really good shim material, which is the basis of making sure when you crank on them, like your real seats don't spin yeah. around. Yeah, um, I've had that you get, happen. Yep. You get good epoxy adhesion mm-hmm. um, and you use a really rigid shim on the inside, then you can you can you can make your handle designs you don't have to have your finger on the blank um yeah. we did with the spinning rods though is in the front if you want to have your spinning your hand on the spinning like on the blank um, yep. you can go really narrow in the front with the taper back um so it almost gives you like that penciling approach that actually comes from ice fishing yeah. uh, with spinning rods yeah interesting yeah that's really I would, cool uh, I, I, it's technical. I guess I can cool. talk about this, Ryan, without giving up. I mean, I had that rod in my hands this this late summer. Is that okay to say? Yeah, it's fine. Okay, yeah. I, I was able to to test it out. Um, and you guys know how much I love the uh you know the the extreme lineup of rods and and that's primarily what I fish for those deeper smallmouth. And I got uh, one of the models where it was perfect for drop shotting and I was able to use it. It, it's a little different because I have so much experience fishing the extremes going to that handle was, it, it, it definitely felt, it felt foreign. Does that make sense? Because yeah. I was so used to mm. all my rods feeling the same all the time like that. But I think the sensitivity was there. I mean, I, I tried to find a reason not to like the rod, right? Because I love <laughs> my extreme so much. Oh yeah, you do. And I was definitely impressed with it. And I think I think once that comes out at the classic and guys get their hands on, I think they're gonna have a, a positive experience. I wouldn't have any problem recommending that at all to people that wanna wanna try it. I think it's a great, a great rod for sure. Yeah, it's it's interesting. You know, it's it's not it's it's a legend tournament, it's very similar to legend tournament because of the blank technology, but legend tournament is a very traditional rod series cork machined aluminum um this has an aluminum nut on it um but there's there's that there's that legend tournament kind of like that heritage feel with the rod series that had to be there when we redid when we redid that series um this one we got to get a little more creative with and it's it plays to that pre-2021 and even 2022 legend extreme category that's always been a little kind of out there for us where we've been able to try some new things and kind of push the boundaries a little bit very cool. Yeah. What's the what's the max length on the uh, in terms of uh, the action and length on your spinning rod? Seven ten. Yep. Seven. You are because somebody asked if you're yeah. bringing out a seven ten. Absolutely. So there's a seven ten hair jig, the seven ten um, medium light extra fast, and then there's a seven ten medium moderate fast, which that extra, used to be the spy bait light. rod of the group, but then that's turned into a totally different grouping of baits to fish what, on. What are guys doing with that? Are they throwing? Are, are they throwing some bigger? I shouldn't say bigger. Say seven ten, like, Travis. The seven ten. Uh, yeah, the moderate. So yeah. So are they throwing like swim baits on that as well? Uh, it's actually been the so the spin so basically spin heads. So you've got the the what is it the spin from Okashira. Mega Mass Spinnings. That's the Okashira head. Okashira okay. screw head. That's what I yeah. throw on my seven six. I wish I had a seven ten. Yep. 
Yep. So there's Travis, you might just have to get me that seven ten button. Yeah. I uh I love it. I think medium light. That's what I throw. I mean, medium light. It whips yeah. it. Mm-hmm. Nothing casts it like a medium light action rod. So the Oka Shear is amazing. I mean, it, and obviously this lineup of rods will be available shortly, but we do want to circle back too and talk about the the Mojo series and kind of the uh the revamping of that lineup, right? Yeah. Um, I was able to get my hands on a bunch of those this summer and we did a lot of, we do a lot of drifting, uh, with Ned rigs deep and that, uh, that medium light, I guess it was the seven ten. Mm. Um, is that correct? Yeah. You had it. Yeah. yeah. Seven ten mojo. Yeah. There's a seven ten in there. Yep. In yeah, mojo. Hell yeah. And that that's worked. what I'm talking about. That was perfect for that. And then we also threw a lot of, uh, heavier football heads on spinning rods and I was able to use that. Um, my clients, it was good feedback with the feel and everything like it's totally redesigned yeah yeah it's uh it is it it really went from a rod that was released dan when was uh the forever mojo, when did mojo bass go from sc2 to sc3 was that like 2018 oh, yeah it's been 2017 2018 yeah yeah it Long. went it's yeah and the feedback has been I can't be any more happy than the way that project has been released and been um, accepted by our England community. Uh, it's been a, again, that was a really fun one to be a pro be, you know, be a part of that project. The real seat uh, and handle design on this one, obviously it shares a lot of characteristics with Mojo. The material is the major, major difference part. Uh, but the Mojo Trigon in the casting handle has been the one that has been overwhelming positive feedback, specifically like the seven, four people that are mm. saying, you know, Hey, I fished a spro and I threw a frog from sun up to sundown and I didn't get a cramp in my hand. That's what we were going for. Like that's that, a big deal, man. That's what we were going for. in that whole thing is to be able to, you know, be able to palm and be able to not get the cramp in your hand down here. Heck right? yeah. Yeah. That's gotta have the right balance for that. That's good to hear. Good job. Mojo, you got your mojo back, Travis. The mojo <laughs> Through yeah. the mojo, that's what it is. I could yeah, be there, there. It is, man. I love it. So, what besides this coming out, the classic is your uh, I mean, what's next? Are you are you thinking? Are you working? Are you uh, I mean, geez, throwing, Trav, they, I mean, what's next, guys? Let's get to the ideas? next thing. No, <laughs> you're always it. here's the deal. <laughs> you always got to be developing, you know, no, they, they have it. The experience I've had and, and just talking to you guys in the past with St. Croix, they're always looking at the next thing. Is that That's a correct statement, right? <clears throat> yeah. I will say that from a product development side, um, what you see here, uh, we'll obviously have releases at iCast. Um, we, we typically tailor everything around uh, the classic or iCast. And then, mm. you know, we either have an 8-1 launch date all the way out to a 12-1 launch date. But I would say, you know, without giving too much up that you'll see at iCast, um, I would say if you're a big bait fanatic, uh, you know, mm. if there's any musky guys on this call or on this on this mm. chat tonight, or if you know a musky guy, I would uh, keep your eyes wide open for yeah. us and, and what we might bring out in musky. Uh, Joe a, Raymond. Yeah. yeah. Joe, 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 Joe Raymond is not <laughs> any, he's not the rock crawling Susquehanna guy anymore. Smalley, he's all about the musky. He went kooky. Yeah. He's a you got to get him a good one. He yeah, truly is, yeah. man. He's yep. lost it. But yeah, he, yeah, Joe's very interested. He's he's listening. Tonight. So we had the big release in 2023 with Grasp, the new handle design there. Uh, you know, I would that handle is going to be around for a really long time. Uh, I would say keep an eye on there. Uh, I would say, you know, that what we're working on right now is what you'll see at the classic maybe next year. So mm. there's there's always refinements always listening to angler feedback, both positive and negative. Trust me. That's when you cool. release a product, that's the best part is you're going to hear a lot of good stuff and you're going to hear a lot of things like, Oh it, man, it's that one. Uh-huh. <laughs> I so, love the old legends. Why'd you get, I'm sure yeah, you hear it you, all, man. Why'd you do Every, that? Yeah. Why'd you do that? Oh, because people, it's like who moved by cheese, man. They get like wedded to a rod. Yeah. It's so sure. true. It's so that's true. the point of this whole thing is, uh, you know, there's companies that push each, push each other forward, you know, with us. Yeah. And, our competitors and our competitors push us and hopefully we're pushing our competitors all to just make better fishing rods. That's the point. Who, of this who would you say is your biggest competitor? Who do you like 
St. Croix, and then you guys have some high-end rods. I yeah. mean, you're made in America, right? Still, yes. Yeah, absolutely. Oh, okay, yeah, right. So, we, so I mean, there's yeah. not many, right? I mean, we have two. Manuf- we have two manufacturing facilities. One <laughs> in Park Falls, Wisconsin, which is okay. You no, know, a right, a right, and another right from my house, and you go 30 miles, and you're, <laughs> you're in Park Falls. That's um, very cool. And we've got a manufacturing one, facility in Fresno, Mexico. Um, oh, so wow. St. Croix North and St. Croix South, and then we've got. St. Croix in the middle, which is neither north nor south, nor south, and it's an old shopping building that we bought and then turned into our new DC. So, Amazing, and that's really yeah. just on the south end of Park Falls. But, How many people work for you guys? Uh, like, what's the company up to? Not that I don't, yeah. you know. That, okay, if you can say, yep. I don't know. Yeah, so we're right around four hundred. That's um, amazing. All, with St. Croix South and St. Croix North, uh, we have um, we actually have a work from home program as well not for not for office folks not for the builders right? for our line winding program what um, yeah, yeah yeah so we get actually, out man no yeah. come on yep absolutely so if all the rods like this one that are wound at st croix north um yeah they're actually it's called the home winder program so get out that's so 40, cool yeah there's 48 home winders right now that wind in their house and they bring I rods in love it bring rods in on mondays and fridays and switch them out um, so That's then they obviously so cool. go through guide alignment and everything sure, internally. Sure. But uh, yeah, we've got a, it's, it's a really good kept secret up here in, in Northern Wisconsin. It's That's um, really cool, man. Yeah. It's a, it's a fun company to be a part of, but going back to your, your uh, yeah. question on competition, you know, there's, yeah. there's been a lot of really cool stuff that has been released in the industry that yep. man, I, I, doesn't matter if you're a St. Croix guy, you're not a St. Croix guy. It's you got to sure. admire. I mean, the Poison Adrena Ultima Rod that was released uh, last year, the classic, really cool. Yep. I mean, just that price point. I mean, holy mm. cow. And then also, I mean, we've seen fly rods go north of a thousand dollars, but I mean, oh, that, yeah. rod series, that rod series is tickling a thousand dollars in a conventional bass rod, you know, that whether, away. whether I, I thought, you know, you know, whether you're like sitting at home with it or lot. not, right. you know. Kudos to them for saying, hey, we've got a piece of technology. We believe in it. And yeah. this is what you're going to have to pay for it. <laughs> so uh, there's a lot of really good companies out there. I mean, I, from our standpoint, we always admire people that build their own blanks um, mm. just because that's what we do. Um, right on. You, you, like St. Croix, you can see a rod mm-hmm. being built from, from start to finish. But there's that's other manufacturers cool. out there, too, that are uh, blazing trails when it comes to new length powers and actions. Um, okay. You know, my whole thing is, is that if you get caught up, you know, thinking about your competition, you're not really thinking far enough down the road. So Agreed. it's all for us. It's all about the next, the next new blank material. What's going on in carbon fiber? Yeah. Our, our carbon fiber, you know, influences come largely from the aerospace industry, which we are the small person in that industry when it comes to, you know, volume. Per se. <laughs> but the cool thing is, is that the partners we work with in the aerospace industry, they fish. So they're all interested in oh, the fibers oh, as well. Oh, that's so crazy. Yeah. I would have never thought of that. Yeah. We're a, we're a multifaceted company. So we're involved in ice rods all the way to surf sure. rods. So yeah, there's, there's a lot of competition out there and it keeps everybody kind of like chugging along. If it was only still, one, yeah. Who still makes their own blanks right now? Like, I'm curious, like yeah. St. Croix. I mean, that's yep. awesome to hear. So, I'm going to probably miss some that I haven't heard of. Sure. Obviously, Lama Glass out in yeah. the uh, Pacific Northwest, Loomis, yep. Woodland, Washington, yep. out in the Pacific Northwest. Yeah. Yep. Uh, Shimano, some, I'm not sure of all of them, but okay. you know, there's still obviously some that are being built. Um, yep. Obviously, there's blank building companies. Uh, yes. Talon, NFC. Like Shadow. Yep. Right. Yep. Uh, yep. There's lots of different blank building companies that you can, you know, you can pick the blanks you want from there, but the yep. amount of blank manufacturers, um, it's just, it's, it's dwindling because it's a, mm. it's a, it's a, sure. it's a trade to know how to build a blank. I mean, we've seen rod companies that are like, yeah, we're building our own blanks. You guys should be worried. Okay. <laughs> you know, <laughs> good luck. <laughs> you know, yeah, right. if you find out something we didn't figure out, let us know because, <laughs> You know, it's been uh, the school of hard knocks to mm. learn how to build blanks. Man, good stuff, man. Thanks. That's great insights, man. I learned I learned a lot. Thank you. Mm-hmm. What do you see? What do, What do you guys see as far as? I guess we can kind of shift this to more. Uh, 
I guess I'm just curious. What, what's like your number one in the bass side uh, as far as rod sales and, and for what technique? Have you seen a – is yeah. it too early to see a change to some of the – I know Eric and I <laughs> talked earlier today and we wanted to talk yeah. about the impact that maybe forward-facing sonars having – uh, on anglers, are you seeing more spinning rods come into play, or is it too soon? Or you know, have you seen the tears on? flowing out of the southern guys that hated throwing a fairy wand? The river of tears <laughs> oh, out of Alabama. Oh my gosh, it's true. Yeah. It's true. They've Dan, had to eat their own words. I love let, it. Let's split this up because I'm interested in <laughs> what you see, and then also I'll I'll chime in for sure on what I see. Yeah. So guys for forever, guys, I mean, when we were in our twenties, a seven foot rod was a long rod, right. You know, oh, and, and, yeah. we're, and, and, uh, and, and I think the seven foot specifically the seven foot to seven, one medium, heavy, fast is still the number one selling bass rod on the planet. Mm. That said, that said, and especially in spinning. And I would also say in casting too, there's a lot more interest in seven, three, seven, four. I mean, we have, seven models between seven, two and seven, three in the series Ryan's just talking about. And there's a reason why that's the case. And, and that's in just casting. And, and when you look at spinning, I think a lot, what a lot of people are figuring it out, and this is true in casting too, is number one, obviously casting distance. Number two, you don't have to swing as hard and run to the back of the boat to get something pinned up. You can fight them so well with a longer rod, but also oh, one thing, God. one thing I talked about actually on a TV show years ago on flipping is that I call it angle of attack and it can be flipping or pitching. And I really segue in why I'm such a big seven, three medium light, extra fast over set over six ten and drop shot, because a lot of times I'm pitching that thing out on hard bottom with a cylinder weight going through eelgrass. And I want the angle of attack or the way, the way in which that line is going down into the water mm. more radical than a shorter rod. And it makes a huge difference. The current wow. doesn't, current doesn't grab it. You get more sensitivity um, without a doubt, in my opinion. You don't have to swing as hard to hook them, and you can fight them, especially on the light line, beautifully. Oh. Um, so so I think to answer your question, all rods are trending longer. Muskie's probably the best example. You know, mm. the guys are out to 10 foot now, right? And what? 25 years ago. Oh, absolutely. Shipping's the only rod? reason. Shipping's the only reason we're not doing it in great with a great degree, but nine foots, nothing what anymore. Eight six being one of the number one selling length. So rods have gotten longer throughout crop. Look at what crappie's done. Good grief. I mean, they're doing 15, oh, 15 16 footers yeah. for pitch and swing forward facing crappie now. So they've Very gotten true. a lot longer, but the nuts and bolts number one selling casting rod is still a seven foot medium heavy. Is it really? Not mm -hmm. even a seven three. Yep, I know, I'm not sure that's going to be I, the case in per, through perpetuity. I, yeah. Because I tell you what, I, all of us that fish a lot see the advantages of longer rods. It's just going to take the market yeah. to catch up to it. What about a spinning rod? What's what's your average length now? Well, the number one seller for St. Croix is a seven foot medium, hands down. All Still, of our seven foot, absolutely. Everything. Seven but, foot, seven foot. But you're talking about multi species, walleye, white bass, you know, uh, every, everything. Yeah. But, but some of these lengths, powers, and actions that especially we're doing, this 7.3 MX, I'll, I'll pick on two real quick here. Yeah. 7.3 medium light, extra fast, and the 7.3 MXF for a little football jig with fluorocarbon on forward facing in deep water is stupid good. because It's a light gauge hook. It's got enough backbone to get the hook set, but the, the sensitivity with that medium extra fast, especially in the SC4 plus blank, in legend mm. tournament is is right now of all the rods in our line and i can get any of them i worked for us for 23 years is that legend tournament 73 mxf for that particular bait and i got a lot of guys saying the same thing um and we're not running super heavy line on it but the feel of it's incredible but you don't miss them and how many times travis have you mm. swung on a small mouth in 20 foot of water and you get three wines and he comes off Sure, and and this rod, they just don't. It sticks them big time, and you can feel with it. The beautiful part about what Ryan's talking about, about this new series, that it has that blank. It's a super fishy blank. Now combine awesome. molded carbon fiber on the handle, it's going to be the real deal. That's amazing. I've stepped up to a 4,000 reel, and I will mm -hmm. never, ever go back to a 2,500, yep. 3,000, 34,000 is the way to go. Yeah, I, I mean. Like, uh, on a 7.6? 4,000, I thought, like tight lining, literally a spark shad on just a plain, not even the Okashira, yep. 
that was my first big seven pound bass I caught. And literally it was amazing how much control I had of the fish because of the length of the rod. Yeah. I mean, he surged. It didn't matter. He what? it was open water. I, I wasn't even worried. I, I'd never felt something like that was like six years ago. I've always wanted to get bigger, you know, than the seven, six to go to a seven, 10, but can't find them. So it's really well, exciting that you guys are coming out with seven tens. That's cool. a lot of people are going to bigger spinning reels. There's really three reasons for that. And yeah, two of which people don't mean. talk about at all. The, the mm -hmm. one, I, I'm mostly a 3,000 size guy on bass and yep. spinning, but it is what it yep. is, 3,000, 4,000, yep. whatever. But sure. there's three reasons why they're talking about that. Yep. As you guys all know, a spinning reel sits dead still and the line comes off it. Where the casting reel, the spool has yep. to turn with it. So that big, that bigger spool, the line comes off it smoother, number one, for castability. Yep. That's what everybody talks about, but there's two other reasons it's really bad to the bone. Number one, your drag discs are bigger. Oh, so yeah. they're super smooth with light line. Wow. Thirdly, and what a lot of people don't talk about is if you look at the gear ratio, right? How the many turns up. of the handle, the line yeah. comes in, right? That larger Arbor spinning reel on the same amount of retrieve is picking up more line. Yeah, I catch up with it when they're coming at me. Absolutely. Yep. They, can't, they can't beat me anymore. Yep. I used to be able to not catch up with the fish if it was coming straight at the boat. Now yeah. it's not a problem at all. 4, yeah, you're, you're not alone. Long. There's a yeah. lot of people going that way. It's a huge advantage. Yeah, yeah. Come on, guys. You're going to have to sell all your reels. <laughs> I, have, <laughs> I have like 40. All right. The, the, 3, the auction starts now. I'm good. No. What's your oh opening God. bid, Travis, for the. Uh, I cannot. Uh, I cannot. You'll do it. You're going to do it. Wait till you. Man. I'm you know how much time it takes buddy. to put backing, no. braid, no. and rigging. <laughs> You've got All that summer intern up. coming in. You just set that intern up and it's done. Travis, you got to go, you got to go online and buy like an actual spooling machine from ah. you know, like a, like a tackle store going on a business or like a, like an actual a great spooling idea. machine. Sure. Yeah. So that's run, a great idea. You run that thing wide open, foot to the floor. It's got an electronic speed pedal. You can cut Travis, that. You got the space too. You got the space, bro. Yeah. Yeah. You got to split, split it with you, man. You I just rigged. Uh, I just did. So I bought. Uh, what did I buy? The Shimano. I think it's called the Dakotas. The the salmon rod uh, with the line counters. Yeah. Um. And I put. I spooled up twelve of them. It literally took me. It, it was a, it was, a, it wasn't easy. You know what I mean? Like <laughs> my fingers were all black after dealing with the braid. Like it wow. was just, yeah. All right. I back, get it. back to the rods. I have a question because I'm a crankbait uh -huh. nut. Look mm -hmm. behind me. Um, what is new at St. Croix with your crankbait sticks? Not that it cranks anymore. Maybe you don't like pay attention to it as much. I'm really curious. I act glass. It, uh, ah. it, yeah. I mean, Honestly, and we should we should talk about this at some point in time too. Like, what's the future of the crankbait with live sonar? Yeah. You know, that's that's the big talk in the industry right now. Is like, what's the? Future I, I of hope the everybody crankbait? goes offshore. It's way more in the dirt yeah. for me, man. I'm fine. I'm I had glass. You know, we uh, there's blank materials out there that are composites, uh, meaning there's like yeah. carbon fiber and fiberglass right. that are fused together. Yeah, uh, yep. I had glass is strategically laid up patterns where you can make a carbon fiber rod act. Or you, you can make a glass rod act like a carbon fiber rod, or you can make a carbon wow. fiber rod act like a glass rod. It just depends on, you know, Absolutely. where you're at and what it's, how it's loaded up without question. Yeah. 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 No, I, 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 there's a lot of guys and we had Dave Mansu and uh, who's the other guy, Travis, that we had on? It's kind of spot. Matt Pangrak was with him. It was, uh, oh my gosh, it's killing me. But anyway, they talked about their preferences in cranking. And one of the things they mentioned is as long as they had the right action on a, mm -hmm. a, a carbon fiber rod, they didn't need the glass. Yeah. I, I'm a composite guy. I like both in the blank for me personally. That's probably because of my history of fishing the rods that I did. But I'm really curious to, to, to feel a rod that you're talking about where it's might be all carbon fiber, but built to act like glass. You know what I mean? Yeah. So with a I nice mean, parabolic bend for the right application, of course. You need a seven to HM legend tournament. Um, it's it's brought out or we brought it out as a chatterbait rod, um, yeah. but it has turned into kind of like a jack of all trades rods. I know, like Which throwing a, throwing a Sammy or Vixen. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Dan yeah. throws a Boing. Uh, you know, you throw so the Boing. Can, throw the Boing. 
I love yeah, the point. I don't throw it around Pike. I only throw those where there's no toothy ones, man. That's it. Uh, we got to talk I've, about the Boeing offline. I want to hear your thoughts on the I've Boeing. Got the, I've, got those, I've got those old – that company changed hands, and I've got oh, some yeah. of those old, old ones that sound like a Me baby too. rattle coming out 80 it's foot away. Crazy. That it's thing's ridiculous. lethal. I threw yeah. with Travis the first time we ever fished together on Champlain, the first time I ever fished together on Champlain, and literally I bombed it as far as I could because I thrown on braid to a – a big game leader, and I could hear the boing at the end of my cast. Oh, yeah. It was going click, click, click. It was crazy. But, um, it, you know, I'm always interested because when I travel up to see Travis, I can't bring 20 rods. So to me, I would like to hear about, you know, a rod like that that's multi-purpose that could do a lot of different things for a co-angler, you know, somebody that's going into an open that has their own portable, you know, live scope unit on the back. They have seven rods or they're limited. They can actually have a shot at catching some fish in a tournament, you know? So that sounds like a great rod. Which, which one was it again? Seven two heavy ladder. Asking. It's called the rip and chatter. The rip and chatter. Yeah. It's yeah. The, you're the loving thing, it for top water. You're loving it for chatter baits. You're oh, loving it for yeah. big square bills. Yeah. The okay, thing about cool. that rod, the thing about that rod, they don't get off. No. And I know you made the mm. comment about carbon fiber action crankbait. And I, there's a lot yeah. of guys still in that lane and there's yeah. some seven, two, uh, MHMs in carbon fiber, I'll still throw some flat sides with and up mm -hmm. the DT6s yeah, nice. on if I yeah, want to be yeah. super, super accurate. But yeah. that 72 HM, what, what happens to it, and I think this is beyond a lot of our conception even, is when that fish gets that bait, we all know it inhales it. It doesn't bite it yes. like a dog. It's sucking right. it in, right? That's so right. that what Ryan spoke to about that glass layup, in the pattern yeah. layup in the 72 yeah. HM, it lets yeah. the fish get the bait. A lot of times with a bladed jig, it feels like I'm running into a something just, just isn't yeah. quite right. I feel the case yeah. go out of the blade, the rod loads up and you swing and he's there. And the carbon fiber, in some cases, bladed jig is probably the best example because that blade can actually act as a deflector if your rod's yeah. too stiff. It yeah. doesn't get out of the way and they, they won't get it. And people will think, man, I had a bunch of bites and I caught a few. You will catch a few, but you're, your bite to catch ratio with that 72 HM, it get the rod just gets out of your way. They, they just huge. get it. It's hard to explain. Mm -hmm. But then, no, you're explaining it right. That's that's huge. I had a buddy, he was struggling with a chatterbait, and I'm like, let me feel that rod. I'm like, dude, you're all wrong. I mean, no, mm -hmm. I mean, we we're fishing a Wednesday nighter. He lost two giant chatterbait fish. And I'm like, the action of that rod is all wrong. And once Absolutely. he got a good chatterbait rod, um he he just kept him pinned i mean it this it's everything you know strike to catch ratio is huge so the right rod that's a really cool rod thanks for, for as good that. as that rod is with a chatterbait uh you know like if you get it around thick grass if you're like yeah. if you're fishing florida thick grass and it's sure. like good green grass yeah not dead grass uh yeah. it, you need to bump up to the heavy moderate fast the flip okay. chat crank in legend tournament bass uh just mm -hmm. so you can rip it clean yeah, um, but right if on. you're fishing open water or around timber, yeah, uh, the seven two HM is the way to go. Actually, it'll actually it'll save your rear end from like thinking you're on a log, and <laughs> or thinking you're on a fish and you're actually on a log and driving the hook into the log. You can probably you can save yourself <laughs> a little bit. That's yeah. good. But, but the seven three HMF uh, is is the rod for if you're around thick grass, like the probably fun. good trap rod, right? For ripping, it's super good. I mean, yeah, it's a good trap yeah. rod. Yeah, mm -hmm. uh, especially trapping trapping grass. You trapping know, like trapping grass. Yeah, yeah. When you can find grass clubs, grass clumps on forward facing sonar and rip chatterbaits through them. I mean, that's right, that's right. the right to have. Right on, right on. Nice, mm. good stuff. We're going the uh, the thing we should talk about is the impact of forward facing sonar on rods. Yeah. And I th I think at first we saw rods get longer. Uh, or mm. people gravitating towards longer rods. But now I think we're seeing like this pendulum swift, uh, you know, movement of watching rods going to get shorter in the nose of the boat. At least that's what we're hearing on our side is that mm. watching the beat down that the guys on the elite series put it like the really good scoping guys, um, you know, that six, six to what? five, nine to six, six to six, eight. I think those five nine, are, yeah. yeah. I think those rods what are going to be coming. Hell? I think those rods are going to be coming way more popular here pretty soon. Are they ever? Yeah, they're gotta... fishing the bait back. <laughs> yeah. They're fishing the bait wow. back with the rod tip down, pointing towards the water. Mm -hmm. It's almost like fishing a little stick bait with a six eight. Yep. 
Yep. But it's it's the same analogy. But yeah. so the, it's it's the, it's the way they're fishing that thing back, and you can watch them. They're just staring at the screen. Yeah. It's a little pop, 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 and all of a sudden they swing. And it'd be a lot harder to do that with a rod that's seven foot longer because same analogy of trying to stroke a, st- a stick bait straight down. You're going to be hitting the tip of the water. Oh, the tip of the water, sure. Mm-hmm. Very interesting. I got a bunch of six sixes and five eights and five nines and six footers upstairs. Yeah. <laughs> it's weird how we see those swings. Side. That's you know? crazy. How <laughs> yeah. about that, man? Interesting. We saw, we saw a spike in our six eight spinning rod, our six eight MXF spinning rod. And we started asking around, like, this doesn't make any sense. You know, it's been in mm. our lineup as a spinning rod for jerkbait anglers. And mm. all of a sudden, you know, it's one of the shorter rods out there. And mm-hmm. we've, we have a retailer that we've kept, you know, we have a really good relationship with most of all of our retailer retailers. We have a good relationship with, but they're like, yeah, your walleye rods are selling, you know, in that six, six huh. length for guys that are fishing forward so- or forward facing sonar in front of the boat. How well, I think, I think the 610 uh, Legend Extreme medium light, mm-hmm. I, I I feel like me personally, I can, I'm just used to that for. Because you're seven foot tall, Travis. But right. if I'm five, six, I'm know. way low. I, it's very true. You stand yeah. mm-hmm. taller because your legs are really long. Uh-huh. So you can get away with a 610. I would not be able to. If I stood where you stood, you had a 610. And at a six, whatever, six ten, yeah. I'd be dipping okay. in the water for sure. That's All a right. Fact. All Taller right. guys, it's absolutely true. Uh huh. Yes. All right, that's fair. Yeah, yeah, man, you got. He's got the bed fishing right? advantage. He, he, yeah, the, right. He <laughs> he's got the, he's got the eagle eyes, man. That's a fact. That's why you know you can't really tell it on camera now, but that's why I'm a better bed fisherman than Dan because Dan's actually like five two. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> I'm, I'm basically the same height as Travis. Uh huh. I stand on oh, I stand in a milk crate in the bow of my Ranger. <laughs> I just got to make sure I don't fall off in big Z's. <laughs> yeah. Tra- Travis lets me stand on his shoulders when we're bed fishing, man. He's, there you go. he's he's a good bud, man. Yeah. Thanks, bud. Yeah. yeah, I point him out to you. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> I, this is the big joke when he's using Ford face and I'm back there. It's like, I go, Travis, what do you see, man? He goes, I'll let you know, bud. And I go, Travis, <laughs> like three hours later, he ain't say shit. And he's cast it a thousand times. I'm like, Travis, this is the rule, man. If you see something, say something. I'll let you know, bud. <laughs> That's the way the day goes. Yeah. <laughs> he's got good eyes though. He can see him for sure, man. It's yeah, crazy. Man. It's crazy how they can hide on that bottom. I don't get it. It's nuts. Yeah. Floating, drifting a flat. With all those rocks and the color changes, what a fishery up there! It's like, it's like Disneyland for for bass. It's just, it's not real. It's crazy. It is. It is. It's Listen just- in the uh, in the comments here, and and maybe we can touch base on this. Yeah. Well, let me see where it was. Where was that, Travis? Uh, Grad eighty four. All right. It's what do we got? Going to get into the real market. Oh, well, crap. <laughs> funny you should ask. I'm, I'm glad you funny you should ask. Yeah. Dan, why don't you take that one? Yeah, that's a first of all, it's a great question. And the answer is emphatically yes. We actually have been. We launched a, a, a new brand called Seven, uh, really taglined by seven decades in the making. St. Croix just celebrated its mm. 75th anniversary last year. The Seven brand is uh owned and operated by St. Croix. Um, it's been really cool. The GF Baitcaster. Man, we, that was the first reel we actually launched out to consumers. I had those in my boat right away and wrote some preliminary reports on them, and it was just awesome. Very small, compact, Japanese bearings. Talk about something that's just right. It's hard for me to blow it up. Oh, it was beautiful. The spinning reels just hit the market recently. There's actually a GS series and a GX series. Um, all of these reels I'm talking about are sub 200 bucks um really really cool they've been well received so far so it's been thank you for the question for sure and we're excited for people to get them in their hands because one thing about st croix and you hear us say it over and over again we're all about giving anglers the best possible experience that's what's product it's the design of the product it's the ergonomics of it it's certainly the service after the sale all these things so seven's been a fun project for sure lucky seven we had That's some awesome. good, definitely hearing some good feedback on, on the reels. Um, I actually, I was able to get my hands on some, uh, 
someone had I forgot who it was at uh, one of the shows over in Boston a couple of weeks ago at the expo there. Uh, they were doing some, uh, they had a, a rod and reel combo and I was able to kind of test it out because I'm very, uh, particular when it comes to my reels and all my gear, really. And yeah, I was Travis, everything. Yeah, I was impressed with them. So it's going to be something I'm definitely going to be taking a look at too. Someone and, asked if you could back reel them. Does it have an anti reverse? Like, do you have that button where you can back reel instead of using the drag to fight the fish? I think that came from Anthony 777. No. Oh. Yeah, no, we don't have that, but uh, there's yeah. a lot to quality of drag and there's a big long yeah. school, school of thought on the on back reel mm -hmm. versus non back reel and I, I i'm not saying certainly not going to say one's right or wrong but what what yeah. you'll notice is when you get a super smooth drag and you even get a big smallie at the boat and takes a run on you up uh, that drag smooth you're not going to pop your lines really cool one mm -hmm. thing i noticed about i was doing crappie dock shooting seminars in alabama this is going back last fall wow How about and that? one but i had the gs 2500 on my shooting rod and one thing i noticed which was awesome is the placement of that spool related to where your line comes off and you're holding that 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 line and you go to mm -hmm. load the rod yeah the spool is set up far enough forward where the line doesn't jump off your finger and i know there's a lot of listeners out there that mm. have experienced now that foregrips are getting longer on rods it enables us to put our hand further up and there's a lot of advantages to that. However, if your finger gets too far up towards the blank, you create an angle going to your spool and you go to cast and the thing goes behind you because it'll jump off your finger. These <laughs> GS and GXs don't do that. And it's that was one of the first things I noticed. I never had it jump off my finger one time and probably shot it a thousand times in three days. And yeah. so it eliminates user error of creating slack in that cast and having that thing jump off your finger. It's kind of a built-in inherent advantage and i'll be honest with you i don't think we tried to do that it's not it something happened. our product team discussed it just happened yep hey yeah. hey if people are looking for the seven series it's not spelled seven like the number it's sev i i n correct yeah it's both it, it's s-e-v-i-i-n oh. and then there's also yeah. the roman numeral seven which is okay. indicated by that's what we show right on the reel but you can you can just oh, yeah. do a search on seven reels and we've got we're really we have 300 dealers and retailers right now across the country carrying them in their stores right mm -hmm. now so they'll be pretty easy to find plus you can get them right directly from us as well oh travis nice. it, they're red and black i mean you won't miss anything bro no yeah the gs is yep <laughs> that's funny um comments here <laughs> come we got we got a uh, pretty good crowd here over uh i saw almost 225 watching live yeah. uh, if you have any questions yeah. um let us know here in the comments and we'll try to get to them. Yeah, I've been it, trying to field them as they come in. Yeah, you've been doing a good job, Eric. I'm proud of you tonight. Try, man. Try. I'm trying to multi process, man. <laughs> Where did All I right. What, are you searching for a question? I saw something that I didn't want to. Uh, it was way back there and I just remembered it. Someone had a question um, earlier about kayak fishing and the rod length butts that are out there um what do you mm. recommend for that or do you have anything in that in your lineup for i, I don't know anything about it so i was just trying to go off of, i didn't know there was different so this, rods is, kayak. Kayak. this is a crooked road to go down and okay. uh, mm -hmm. that i really enjoy this question because we uh we sponsored the hobie tournament trail and we've got a really good relationship with hobie and a number of people that uh are really entrenched in kayak fishing. Jackson Orr um, had a tremendous tournament season last year um, with the Hobie series, All, is continuing with us as a member of my analytical pro team. Great, really good angler. But uh, being around kayak anglers, there's like two schools of thought. Um, it depends on if you're doing a sit on or a sit in. Hmm. So it seems like the natural progression is to go from a sit in to a sit on. And then once you go to a sit on, it's like, okay, then I'm going to try to get myself comfortable with standing up. So we have a, we have a line of rods that are, that's just for, um, I shouldn't say just for, because really it doesn't matter if you're fishing in a kayak or not, you can still use them, but it's very tailored towards sit in kayaks. So they have shorter rod handles 
But then what, the feedback that we've gotten from anglers is that once they go to a sit on or a stand up, they're using rods that are, you know, d- they don't have to be kayak tailored. Um, it's almost um, almost like a put down when you say, hey, are you using kayak rods? They No, they don't want to be considered that way. They want to use mm. regular rods because, I mean, let's be honest, kayak fishing is can be a lot of different things to a lot of different people, but there's some pretty bad kayaks out there. Like there's some really cool stinking kayaks in the market that are way nicer than any of the uh, first bass boats that I had. (laughs) What Ryan's Ryan's referring to on a sit-in and the the reason why the Mojo Yak is the series he's referring to that's specific to kayak sit-ins is the handle shorter. So it gets around a PFD. Yep. That's it. Mm -hmm. I mean, once you stand up, there's no advantage to that. Yeah. And that, right. that's the point that he's trying to make. And I completely agree. A okay. lot of the very high level kayak tournament anglers are using our legend tournament, legend extreme. Yeah. And all, yeah, absolutely. Mm-hmm. Do you guys in, in like your regular things? I like, I'm really particular. I have to, that butt of the rod has to come right to about here for me. That's where my fighting power. Cause I, you know, for me, yeah. that's just a personal preference. So I'm not a shorter, there's some rod manufacturers that I wanted to try out back in the day. And I'm like, it's just hit me right here. And I don't feel like I have that leverage or you're talking days, about, you're talking about the, spinning, spinning, rods the lead, though, right? the lead, both. Oh, really? Both. Okay. Yeah. Oh, mm-hmm. both. Yeah, it's interesting. Cause spinning rod, no doubt. I mean, you get that thing oh, yeah. in and, and, but a Absolutely. casting rod, a lot of people are putting I'm it in a lefty. the section. I'm a le- I, yep. Yeah. No, I never in the mid always okay. here, Ben. Always. I'm always, mm-hmm. I'm always there for some reason. Mm-hmm. If you ever want to get a group of anglers fired up, let's talk about that. No, it's, it's handle oh. lengths. Handle links, okay. handle configurations. Yeah, yeah. yeah, oh yeah. Hook keep replacement. Yeah. Oh yeah. Oh, that's a good one. What do you yeah. see? Oh, that's a good one. Look at that. That's a crazy one because I'm a lefty. So here's a question. You guys are rod builders. I have a real, real serious question for you. Okay, so some rod manufacturers have moved the uh, hook keeper to the butt of the rod. Yeah. I, I almost dropped my rod in the water the first time I tried to put it on there. I, I, my brain just doesn't compute. I'm a lefty. Like I grew up with a spinning rod reeling with my left hand. This is on my right. I'm a right-handed person. I'm power. This is my power. This is how I cast. I don't want to cast and then switch hands. So I got lefty bait casters, right? So where should, for a right-handed caster, where is the ideal hook keeper placement on a bait caster? On your reel. <laughs> <laughs> all right fair it should, fair. It should always be right here okay <laughs> don't ever put it there honestly okay. the uh the oh, you, you could ask you could walk the bass masters classic and ask yeah. 10 different people and you'd get 10 different answers but why why, why do they because want the it? line will wrap around oh. like you will find that line in that damn hook keeper multiple times a day i guess i don't know uh, maybe it's something i'm doing mechanically wrong so the thing i will say is is that there's a lot of work believe it or not on this little part you know yeah there's a lot of work going on at st croix right now on that so i like i am good i'm going to not add too much to this Um, but but dan's Dan's been in some knockout drag outs where we (laughs) Have to round and round. Okay, see, it's like putting a quarter in the jukebox. We didn't even get to the next, my next song here. Forward facing sonar. <laughs> oh, yeah. Keepers and handle lengths. Like, oh, you want to yeah. you want hit the trigger button. Oh, that's funny. It goes man. right there. You're oh, true, wow. true, true, true. You got that's you, what I said. You on, know that's was, a fact. Yeah, I was being kind of a, you know, smart aleck. On the real. No, I like it. It made me laugh. Thank Let you. Let the real take care of you. <laughs> I, I just can't stand put it. Yeah, I get it though. Believe me. Yeah. But for me, you got to think about what I'm doing. I team fish right a lot. I'm with Travis, so I'm I don't have my rods nice on the deck like Brian Thrift with the hooks on the top of the reel all laid out. I have to put them next to each other. I have to ride around a bumpy boat. So for me, I when I'm cranking, dude, I'm putting a lure wrap lure religiously out. because after a rough ride. You go to pick up one, and it's real. It's crazy. I right. pro wrap them every time I switch. Yeah. Anyway, so so you when have we're to making a, a run, he's got his face mask on, even if it's 100%. July. He's got his stock even hat July. on, even if it's July. So 100%. then he's got this weird. He doesn't have a usual, uh, like a normal 
floatable What's light normal, jacket. Trev? He's you, got this weird thing that he snaps in different places. It's the, I never take it off. Okay. I work the whole time. You're wearing? No, I got the spin lock. For the, uh, the guys that do the yacht stuff, but nothing with the car. Okay, so he's got all the between strap, if you know what I mean. No, I no, no, okay. no, 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 no. I cut it off. Okay. No, I just I just like it there, man. That's it. I never take it off. If I'm fishing uh, and the water pick. temps anywhere they're cool in the Great Lakes, I don't care if it's 90 degrees. I have that vest on 99% <laughs> of the time. So he's got that going on. He's got his beanie on. So he's got a lot going on. And then over here in his yeah. rods. He's got all the line wrapped around, and he has to put his plastic it's perfect. thing on his crankbait. It's perfect. So when I get to a perfect. spot, and he takes his mask off, takes his beanie off, takes his gloves yeah. off, takes well, all the stuff off, scoping, stands bro. up. You don't have to worry about me. By the time he gets a rod in the water, <laughs> 10 minutes has gone by. <laughs> Which is fine, because all you're doing is you're not even casting because you're Every looking. Time. So I'm, I'm actually fishing before you 99% yeah. of the time. Oh, take that. Well, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> interesting dynamic, but you gotta love it though. It's awesome. Yes, yes, yes good yes. one, man. I can't wait to see what you come up with at St. Mm -hmm. Croix for the new new hook holder, whatever you call that thing. Well, no, I think you're trying to say there there there's a lot of work, meaning it could take years to figure this out, right? Like it's a I think he's got a new invention coming. I don't know. Ah. I think they're thinking, they're they're trying, but it sounds like a debate. Yet. You never you know. never know what might come out. So. Ah, I like it. Build suspense. Uh huh. Fix that. I like it. So obviously, Saint Croix's been uh, a supporter of the Opens last year, and you continued mm -hmm. that this year. Uh, talk to us a little bit about that, and and you know, what do you see as far as some of the anglers coming up in the Opens? Obviously, you guys follow that a lot, yep. being a main sponsor of the Opens. What are your thoughts on that, and you know, being able to qualify for the elites through that? Um, it's a lot of excitement. You know, every there's there's a lot going on. There's been guys that have been trying to qualify for the elites for years, right? And one or two bad tournaments, and you're kind of out of it. You know, I feel bad. I have some good buddies that, you know, they ended up in like 150th. I'm just picking numbers. Don't look at 150th. That's But, like, you do a one or two. Like, what, we got two opens now under the belt? Yep. Um, I mean, that's a huge commitment, and you got to be pretty consistent. Yeah, I uh, had the opportunity to travel around to a number of opens last year and and the year before our kind of our first sponsorship year, uh, one of which one was on the Chesapeake Bay. And what mm. what an awesome fishery. What a cool, cool place mm. to fish like that's on the list to to go Travis. and hang out there at some point in time. Travis yeah. couldn't wait to get out of there. He oh, man. I'm glad I'm not there anymore. Fire out oh. of there. I was oh. there for uh, we were there during the massive king tide deal that went on where all the boats oh, were coming off the hoist lifts and everything oh yeah dude watch i was there uh i know pete galusek pretty well i was there oh, yeah, dude. a hard time for falling in the water uh-huh <laughs> uh, really i fun was to so watch pulling for him man ah, I love to pete, do well man. there i think you know everybody was pulling for him to do well oh yeah the thing oh, yeah. that impressed me the most of that specific open was um shoot gerald swindle's nephew um, oh yeah that, that went through the boat insurance thing, walked up on That's stage right. the last day and said, Hey, I screwed up. You know, that, he owned it. that is integrity. That is a stand up angler right there that did. He owned it. Yeah. I mean, Trey, Trey Swindle. There we go. Yeah, um, Trey. Fantastic angler. I mean, don't know the guy. never had a conversation with him, but to see that, that is, that is everything that is, that is right with fishing right there. I um, agree. I agree. Had, I met him down at Gunnersville, man. Stand up kid. Yeah. Had a chance to, um, you know, be at most of the opens, including uh, the one last year to see, uh, you know, Trey kind of um, for sure his spot as being a next elite series angler. But Trey is amongst an incredible group of anglers that is coming into the elite series. I mean, just an absolutely incredible group that lived the on the road life, um, which, you know, from what I see from the anglers that we have a chance to interact with, traveling from spot to spot and making sure your stuff doesn't break down, like, and making sure it can weather the bumps and bruises along the road, making sure you got your stops planned out, making sure you can do it fiscally responsibly. So you got enough money to put gas in your truck after the next one. Yeah. Um, but I will say, I think there's a significant advantage out there to anglers that go all in, you know, and don't have a job on the backside, you know, either sure. save up a whole bunch of money and use that savings account to be able to do the opens and just focus on the opens. Uh, because the guys that are trying to do 
have a full-time career and do the opens, God bless them. You know, when somebody yeah. does that, which it'll happen at some point in time, yeah. um, you know, those guys, those guys have earned it, but that doesn't take anything away from Trey, JT, JT Tompkins or any of those guys that are coming into the opens this year. Cause it's, or coming into the elites this year, because wow, what a stack group. Sure. Going to be interesting. It I is. Mean, what, we're to, when, when does it start? Wednesday? Thursday. Yeah, absolutely. Oh, Thursday. Yeah, I was at Toledo Bend and saw a Millican win down there too. And mm -hmm. what a neat thing for the sport of bass fishing though, because that guy, I mean, he had a giant autograph line. And oh, yeah. every day after weigh-in, there was a giant autograph line. And yep. the age, you know, looking at the typical age of who's in his, who's in his autograph line, there was none. I mean, there was eight-year-old kids having them sign a swim bait. You know, there were guys that were well into their 60s and older standing in line there just wanting to talk to him, you know, and he's a very charismatic individual. Yep. Um, definitely has that social platform to draw oh, yeah. some new attention to um, to the elites, which I yeah. think is good. No, it and needs it for sure. He's the other, the other part is, is, you know, he's kind of like, uh, you know, he's, he's got equity in six cents. He's got equity in mm -hmm. some companies. He's not, mm -hmm. you know, he's not a part of, you know, look at his boat wrap that tells the story right there. So, mm -hmm. I mean, it's, it's going to be interesting when that first blast off happens, you know, go three tournaments into the next year into the elite series and see what it looks like. Sure. Yeah. It's going to be fascinating. It really truly, is. Truly. It's interesting that they chose the, uh, the, they flip. They're always in Florida historically, and now they're in Texas. I wonder. <laughs> <laughs> no, it... Travis, I'm just trying to stir okay. the pot. I'm just. <laughs> kidding. Right. But yeah. you got to go for a guy like you. You'd be. I mean, I would think you would be the first one going. <laughs> this is ridiculous. This is a conspiracy. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I'm the one. I'm going. It was a joke. It was a joke. Yeah. It's going to be fireworks, though. It should be interesting. It is it's going to be a great. Is, class. is it still is it still muddy down there? I know the lake's got muddy. It got a lot of rain, so it's sure. really interesting to see. Ufala is like a mud hole right now. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. Um, Brett Carmichael was down there. Travis. He posted on his Instagram. <laughs> literally, I mean, there was wood everywhere. Uh huh. I mean, if you've ever been on a body of water after a flood and you've seen it, it that's what Ufala looked like right now. Um, and I know, I know it was muddy down there for Carn Wright, so we'll see. It's going to be interesting. It's I can't be. wait for it, man. Yeah, I'll I'll yeah. look forward to. Uh, I'll be paying a little more attention, especially to this first event here. Uh, and then, of course, why I the last? I just I I kind of want to see what goes on with that pre-spawn bite down there. It'll, it'll probably okay. be a lot of forward-facing sonar. Yeah. Um, and then I guess they're wrapping up the elites in August up on my body water, the St. Lawrence. So those will probably be the two that I'll follow the most, but yeah, um, yeah. they're on the Waddington uh, in August. So they're going to be a little, a little further from the lake, but how far is that lake. from the mouth? Like a Cape 80 miles, maybe. Hmm. How long so would that take you to run? No, uh, it'll be an hour, hour and 20, hour 15, yeah. something like that. Yeah. Okay. If they're even allowed to go to the lake, I don't know if they will be. Sometimes oh. when they go to Waddington, very true. They keep you in the river. They make um, it a true Saint meeting because of the weather, or because that's the what the tournament's going to be like. It's it a river. Be, like like last year, they were out of Clayton, and so they had okay. access to the lake. And and I don't know if you guys noticed, but a lot of the elite guys that had access to the lake that fished the lake, they went even further than. I've seen the majority of uh, elite events anglers fish like they're. You mean they went way out? They're pushing the limits to even what was considered uh, just four or five years ago. I mean, they're going wow. way back now. Yeah. Wow, that's crazy. Like, how much fishing time would they have? Is it kind of like when they're running from the Delta the weather, of Louisiana? Course, yeah, like it's those more epic runs those guys would do. Yeah, and have like an hour and a half to fish, like run three hours, yeah. man, fish for an hour and a half, and then run three hours back to make it into way. It, it gets crazy. a little, it gets a little interesting, Eric, on on Ontario because you, it's a obviously borders Canada, so there is some rules. Um, mm -hmm. 
and and you're also okay. gonna oh, need to hit, you're see. also gonna need to fuel up if you're gonna make that long mm -hmm. run. And I don't yeah. know how guys are getting away with that because um, mm -hmm. you have to fill up in Canada. And hmm. I, I'm not sure how it works because if you technically if you step on the dock, you're gonna have maybe they stay in the boat. I know there's ways to do it. I know when oh, they wow. had some of those restrictions in 2020, 2021, there was it was even a little tougher to be able to to fish it or stop at a marina to fill up. But I'm talking about it was just unusual to see where these guys were were pushing the limits out on Lake Ontario. Mm -hmm. Forget the long runs from Messina or Waddington. These guys sure. were literally pretty close to the mouth, but then they were going way, way out, you know. And That's places amazing. like I fish, I don't have as much experience. And, and you know, we're past a lot yeah. of those islands we fished. Wow. Why why are they running that far? Because that, that group of fish are just untouched or what what's driving them out there? I wouldn't Bigger say it's schools? untouched. If you if you go over there, you're gonna see a lot of Cana there's a lot of Canadians that fish, right? Okay, um, sure. They're not sure. all there. There's there's a group of anglers that are fishing those sections, not tournament anglers, because for for a local tournament, it's almost too much to to commit for a one day event to even run out in those areas. But yeah. an elite event with that much on the line, with anchor to your points, with yeah. trying to get away from the crowd, differentiate yourself. That's why these guys are pushing and and right and taking a chance. So right. that's what I look yeah. forward to is events like that. Very yeah. interesting. Good mm -hmm. stuff, man. Heck Good yeah. Stuff. The chat fired up with the Millican comments, man. There's a definite group of uh, <laughs> Millican fans here, and there's a definite group of Millican not supporters. So he's a oh. polarizing figure at this point. I like the guy, man. We've had him. Me I think too. He was on show, wasn't he? Yeah. I, yeah, I've been on shows with him. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, yeah. Bateman live, we were on together. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. Yeah. I got no problem. I will. Uh, I'll put my hat in the ring too. He's obviously not a Saint Croix guy, um, you know. So, <laughs> right. Um, but I will say that every interaction I've had with him has been overwhelmingly positive. Sure, that's good to hear. That's good. He's a good businessman, for sure. Oh yeah, I mean, <laughs> yeah. he is. Yeah. He is. A, I think he's a businessman first. Yep. And a hardcore crazy fisherman. Mm -hmm. I mean, it, it. I mean, he's on the water how many days a year? Like much possible a lot yeah. and pumping out some incredible content mm -hmm. i mean you got hats off to him man yeah heck yeah he's a, he's a threat for sure it's gonna be an interesting derby it's, it's it's interesting to think about you know he's a big bait guy yeah he's i mean he's a big guy that's his like self-proclaimed you know identity but, oh, but he throws a spinning rod like a madman. Absolutely. Man. Oh my God. You know? Yeah. He don't care how to, he's going to catch him. He'll throw whatever tool, which is awesome. You know, you no. go back to a couple of years where Jason Christie literally has a classic in his grasp. And he looks at the camera and he goes, What do you expect me to do? Pick up a fairy wand and skip a Senko under the dock. And I'm screaming at the TV, going, Yeah, do it. Do it. <laughs> and then he comes back the next year and wins it in part on a fairy wand. That's awesome. And so it's amazing to me that, you know, the transformation that LiveScope has created for people that were so anti-spinning rod, like, you know, no they call it fair, crazy. because it was, it's a manly thing. You it's fish a a fairy wand. I even hate the term fairy wand. I, 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 can't, I, I know you do, but you can't get away from it. it. They're not calling that anymore. <laughs> Maybe they are. Maybe they'll look at the camera. Can you believe this damn live scope has reduced me to a fairy wand? It is so much you more right. enjoyable You're probably going to see that. Fishing with a spinning rod than a bait caster. Night and day. I could not dude, even. Dude, you don't have to argue with me. I'm only <laughs> stating what the. It's amazing to me to see the transformation, right? Uh -huh. That, you know, big, brawny southern guys that absolutely hated it are now like used to ride down the lake and they would laugh at the guy throwing a spinning rod. Like, that guy's in trouble. Like, he no. can't catch him. Power okay. Fishing. Yeah. Do you remember five, six, yeah. seven, eight years ago when when the uh, the the FLW, right? Back yes. in the day. When they, started, the when they started, they started. Yes, that was the a big head deal. Tour. To compete yeah. with all that pressure, with yes. all that practice going on on the body of water. Guys were picking yeah. up the yeah. the shaky head. Right? It was the whole, it was a whole deal for years. Called and years. the shaky head tour. Yes. Okay, so right. it's been going on way before forward facing sonar too. And guys really? have to adjust. There's no Man, better way 
to to get it's, more bites. If if your goal is to go out there and set the hook, are you trying to sell me fish, on it? There is no better way than to put a little finesse bait on, get in areas well, where you fish are living, I did catch work your bait pounds. properly, be one with the bait, get out there with a spinning rod and go do. I work. agree. Okay? I agree, dude. You're gonna I, get love, I grew up. Bites. I grew up on a spin rod, Travis. I okay. love it. I still love it today. I love ultralight fishing. I love it. I love the fairy wand, man. I really do. <laughs> <laughs> i've hit a nerve it's okay yeah. dude it, and look, the world is coming to your point of view which is awesome maybe i'm loose because the next best bite besides a spinning rod is which is a frog punching a one ounce weight through a big old man yeah. no top water no look at that we would we'll never agree we're just not gonna agree <laughs> uh, top water man are you kidding me I want Dan to tell me the story about what well, you was it you tell me the big story about the uh, big easy in Florida man with the well Jay? that that bait was that bait was put in my arsenal years and years ago and I yeah I I let that baby out sooner than I should have I mean that, mm. that I don't know why but and I know mm. um, it's been mentioned quite a bit but that thing flat out flat out catches them and it'll come through anything you throw it in the key yeah, the, the, no right, the key's the right hook you know mm. is a lot of it but and i'll tell you another thing a lot of people don't we'll know talk about later easy. <laughs> another thing a lot of people don't know a lot uh, that don't know about a big easy is you can skip it yeah, yeah. which is remarkable for a bait yeah. a swim bait that size it'll skip sure and you can run it by a dock post it'll never hang up because the hook's hidden in that little channel and they freaking Isn't that amazing <laughs> Yeah, I caught my personal best on Smith Mountain skipping a magraph under a dock. Eight there seven. you go. Yeah, had the frame yeah, of a absolutely. ten. Just she was postponed, man. But yeah. I mean, that thing just slides, dude. It's oh, crazy. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's crazy. So at least you could still catch them that way, right? Oh, for sure. I mean, it's a, uh, and I, I don't know what it is because I don't, I haven't seen anybody skip it back in there like we can skip a bass jig. But yeah. I, you know, I think the fact that it goes back there so violent. And it's that oh, big yeah. bang, 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 bang. I think it's kind of that dinner <laughs> bell deal. Because a lot oh, of times sure. they've got it before you turn the handle over. Oh, know? very it's, true. It's a, very true. It, it's a it's a unique way to do it. But, you know, in the the uh, mag draft, that bait they've got called the freestyle where the hook's hitting mm -hmm. too. I'm throwing yeah. that a lot on the river right now. And mm -hmm. nasty, nasty log jams and lay downs and where I could never dream of throwing a mag draft. Mm -mm. No, no. I love the freestyle. It's awesome, man. I take that cat's out of the bag, though. But Unfortunately, anyway. I think you're right. <laughs> I know. I know, man. I know. I know. Good stuff. Good stuff. What else, Travis? Well, what else is on the, your mind? I, I, a couple questions. You know, Dan and Ryan, let's say uh, let's say you, you got two different scenarios here, but let's talk. Um, so if someone wants to, let's say they're not, a, a, they haven't used St. Croix rods in the past, right? And they want to get into it and they want to, want to get one for spinning let's say and one for for bait casting whatever applications what do you suggest there they start out with uh, i mean you have a lot of series i from the victories to the mojos to the extremes like i guess it's really your your preference as far as price point and what you want to accomplish but like what's a good entry level uh rod and in in what series would you recommend for someone that you want to try, I'm going single. Bass X. It's mm. been, yeah, I'm going Bass X. Um, I've got a, I've got an eight year old, and he is eaten up with this. And <laughs> he, uh, he went from fishing my rods to he has his whole set of Bass X rods. Uh -huh. And I yeah, say that yeah. um, because I've, I've, I brought in a few of my friends into fishing that way. Um, is you can buy the whole line of Bass X rods and have you know, 75% of all the 75 to 80% of the rods you're going to need. Um, Bass X is just SC2 is a fantastic platform. The generation uh, we up we released last year, the black and red generation we released at ICAST last year, fantastic rod series. Spinning, spinning rods are good. Um, the new casting rods are fantastic. They're just, they're great, great for your great bang for your buck. I mean, yeah, I would, I would agree. Bass X SC2 SC folks stands for St. Croix. It's a kind of a rocket science way we explain our carbon fibers, but um, it, it is, it's, a, it's the most produced material in rods in the history of our company by far. It's an, the number one selling produced rod in North America of all times a triumph. And that uses SC2. I would oh, yeah. say, I would say this though, 
the biggest jump in performance in St. Croix, in my opinion, beyond the shadow of a doubt from SC2 to SC3. And that's because mm. you start to get a technology called IPC, which people can Google or do a search and hit our site. That's where you start getting those freak show actions and the tips. And it's not that much more expensive, but it is, I've called it fishy for decades. And by fishy, I'm just talking about swinging on fluorocarbon from 10 foot away and not popping it, delivering a buzz bait without it tumbling, um, mm. all the things that come into a real, real, real bad to the bone rod. You get an SC3 and we used to flagship that with Avid, you know, for decades. Um, and Mojo Bass has that right now. Um, that SC3 blank is, I would put it ag up against any blank at the price point on the market ever made. And that's a wow. strong statement. It's a strong yeah. statement, but I'm a huge believer in that SC3 blank. I still use it a lot to this day. And that's the Bass X with the SC3? No, that's, that's oh, Mojo oh, Bass. That, Mojo yeah, that's, Bass. That's, that's a, that's a step you. up. And so Thanks. either, I think Ryan, you and I are right there together in terms of two rods that are very, very close and pretty close in terms of price point. But, um, yeah, either way, you're going to be really, really well off there. Perfect. Good to hear. Heck yeah. Well, guys, Great listen, I, uh, that was good. I'm just seeing if there's any other questions here. And I know we said we were going to keep it short and sweet. Somebody tonight. asked one last question. I saw it earlier, so I'll ask yeah. it. Are you going to be making a high-end travel rod? Hmm. It, it had high end in it, so I had to ask the question. <laughs> So we have uh, we have an Avid Trek currently. That's our okay. highest end travel series. Okay. Uh, you know, if you were to expand on you know more on what's going on with rods right now, there's been a significant boom in two piece rods and multi piece rods. Have ever, you really? Absolutely. Ever I since used to um, them all the time. Yeah. You know, uh, ever since really that COVID word. You know, um, oh. that's really something that has not cooled down in the industry at all. Is multi piece rods. Um, wow, we've, we've been just really lucky to uh, have you know, be you know ahead of the game on building travel rods and uh, multi-piece rods. So we've been able to enjoy um, you know a substantial part of business of that. But Very Avid cool. Trek is that SC3 material that Dan talks about in a three-piece oh, really? form. Yep, the fish, fishy, fishy material. I like it. Well, I I'll tell you one thing about Avid Trek. I shot a video yep. of it when it first came out. I could have swore yep. to God it was a one piece, and I was no using way. a three piece rod. It's stupid. What's it, the, and it, what, the, what what lengths do they come in? What what this, lengths this, and this, this one was like a yeah. This one was like a seven foot medium. It was whatever we had to shoot with. Oh, so I can't perfect. remember the LPA. It's perfect. But, but it was it's three piece. It was three pieces, and Saint Croix has something we call slim feral design. Slim profile yeah. feral design. And okay. I swear I threw 20 casts with that thing. And I thought there's no way this is a three piece. And that's, that's kind of what I'm cool. saying about this SC three blank. It's just, it's, it's the real deal when people fish it. And you hear a lot of people saying that. Very cool. All right. We had, uh, someone's asking Thank about you. the victory. That's SC three, right? That's uh, SC three plus. 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 Yeah. Got it. Okay. No, yeah, what, to, yeah to, to that point, that Avid Trek SC3, Mojo Bass SC3, Victory SC3 Plus, which is a secondary carbon fiber laid up. It's, but the foundation of that blank and SC3, really hard to beat. Have you, that, can, can we talk real quick? Because I, I, I'm kind of curious about this. Uh, your, your walleye lineup of rods, whether it be, um, I guess you have like the the Icon, right? Or the what's the or the the legend walleye right yep um is there any rods in the walleye lineup that you see bass anglers using good question <laughs> yes and which ones are they and what techniques uh well uh if, if, you know jesse wiggins um said the term once, i'll never forget it if you ain't scoping you hoping and <laughs> he was he was the one that uh, turned me on to using shorter, shorter rods with live sonar okay. on the front of the boat. Sure. Uh, specifically, yeah, that's that six, 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 eight, um, six, ten, and it, okay. it's not about casting distance. Let's throw casting distance out the wind, out the window when it comes to this, because mm -hmm. you know you're fishing within thirty to forty feet of the boat with these. Uh, I think that there we have an eight foot uh, multi piece rod in Legend Tournament walleye and an Avid walleye. Yep. that uh, a lot of the float and fly guys out in California mm. are using. It doesn't seem like that technique has 
really migrated east. Uh, mm-hmm. It's still super mm-hmm. strong in California. There's a lot of a lot of guys that are combining that with live sonar and being really effective with it. Um, float and fly. Float and fly. Yep. Huh. It, yep. It's big. It's big, in, it's big in Tennessee too. They do a lot of it down there. Yeah. 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 Used to make they, it. Are they going to? Are, are you fishing a float and fly, or can you? Say that again, Travis. How deep are you typically uh, fishing a float and fly? Because so float and fly obviously has some sort of float. It mm-hmm. can be. Can it be a slip float or a stationary float? Right. And I, the the little experience I have with it, I know they make specific floats where they actually lay on the side. And when you get a bite, it tips up. Does that make sense? Is that yeah, recall? there's that. Okay. And then you got this school of thought, too, where a lot of guys are using clear slip bobbers as well. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. So okay. the we have one of our staffers that have, has done really well consistently in California named Matt Frazier with a float and fly. It's done a number of articles with Western Bass on it as well. And he fishes fish as deep as like 35 feet with a float and fly. Holy shit. Yeah, exactly. A lot of patience. That, just, that doesn't make right, any calm, sense. Calm, but I mean, that's incredible. It's super technical. Mm-hmm. Right, so wait a minute. The, how does he? Well, I'm just trying to think about. Yeah, yeah like, it's like, like, yeah, he, stop, like does he the fly really the bobber good. connect, and then there's a little stop that's way down in his reel? Yep, just like and a regular cool. bobber setup. Yeah, that's cool. So he's just chucking the whole thing out there, clear, letting that thing go down. And it's yep. probably taking forever, and he's watching it on his sonar. Yeah, obviously Absolutely. seeing some suspended fish, but he's getting a really dinky bait down to him, right? Because he's using like the spro f- fat fly. Yeah, on right there. Hold on. Yep. I always want to try this on the Chesapeake Travis. One of those videos we never shot in the I winter. Know, but anyway, about. maybe I bought maybe a bunch we can of fly stuff. I got yeah. it, dude. I mean, are you kidding me? Right. That would have been so fun. They're there. We could have done Let's it. Do it. You'll have to come back. All right, here's my next question. Let's say, and this I think is more on your walleye lineup of rods. Let's say you're getting a a eight foot rod or whatever the case may be. And and you offer that both in a one section rod or you can break it apart and have, you know, for travel or convenience of storage. Is there a difference in sensitivity in your opinion Mm. on a rod that breaks apart or one that, that doesn't? Good question. Unless you put it together, you're never going to, I mean, unless you put it together and you really like cert or if, or if you're really reviewing the rods before you fish them, we, we purposely took avid track in multi or multiple occasions and put it out with charter fishermen uh-huh. and put it out with, with clients that, you know, that just weren't paying attention. They were just fishing whatever was given to them. Sure. We asked at the end of the day, do you know, that was a multi-piece rod. And they're like, no way. And then you go up to it and pull apart. Uh-huh. No, I mean, fishing two piece rods have come so much. Yeah. It comes so far since what people think two piece rods. You know, there's, mm. you know, we're one, I will say we're one of the manufacturers. There's other manufacturers out there that are making really good two piece rods. Um, but if you're smart and you're staying away from brass barrel connections, which, gosh, I hope those still aren't even in the marketplace, but uh-huh. <laughs> high end, high end, um, multi-piece rods you should not feel a difference okay you, know, you your shouldn't skinny, get your skinny feral yeah That's where cool. you can tell if a multi-piece rod is really well designed is if you flex it you don't want to see yeah. any flat spots okay because that's that's a challenge in structural integrity of that blank sure. stay away from that, that no matter what manufacturer okay. it is okay but Good stay away point. from any flat spots even where the ferals are that all should bend naturally together okay interesting uh, um, so quick question. If you're using a travel rod, is I it still a good idea to like twist that like ferrule on, on your nose so you get a little oil in so you get it apart easier when it's not dry? <laughs> Does that really work? Or is that just some like thing I read in a magazine one time? I don't know. I don't know. I think it depends on if so you know how the ferrules before or something. But <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know, that's a that's you a know great, what I mean? That's a great <laughs> question. And doing I did fl- still do fly casting instruction for years. And it, obviously fly really? cast, the class rods are four piece. So oh, yeah. I can't tell you how many times number I one get them apart sometimes. Well, but... there's a way to do that that I've shown people. Basically, what you do, it's hard for me to explain. I can yeah, show you sure. easy, but you grab yeah. one part like the male part of the ferrule with your right yeah. thumb, close yeah. your knee, close your knees, take it around your yeah. back and touch your thumbs, and then grab your hands and open your knees. I've never had a rod. I have not gotten a part doing that. And I've had people bet me. Uh, fly are you rods that are, kidding me? I swear to God, fly rods that have been That's stuck for so 10 years. That's so crazy. Oh, yeah. Come it comes on, man. Your legs are you so much stronger. You should do a YouTube video it, on 
that. Oh, that's you, crazy. It, you're you're basically doing that. You're not out here with your hands. Yeah. Your thumbs are touching, but your knees are what open, and you're so strong there, it just comes apart. People are like, "You've got to be kidding me." Yeah. That's crazy. That'd make a great. That'd go viral. Yeah. Well, I mean, I don't know. Maybe everybody knows that fly fishes, but uh, yeah, man, there were days where I <laughs> yeah. couldn't get those two pieces apart, or you know, my fly rods were kind of stuck. So yeah, just do the little waxy thing on my nose, just so there was a little bit of oil in there, man. It worked good. It worked good. You know, everybody is so convinced that with a multi-piece rod that they're going to throw the end off. You know, go oh, yeah. tell, go out on Montauk, you know, out of the end of Long Island there and go to those surf casters that go out to the, the sure. lighthouse out there and watch those guys that are getting out on rocks and then like bobbing around in the float suits and using their two-piece surf rods to make sure they don't literally float out to sea, you know, and That's tell those crazy. guys, yeah, you, your two-piece rod's going to come apart. No, it's not. Uh -huh. That's you know, crazy. if it's locked in, if it's the correct fitment, if the manufacturer did their job, you're not yeah. going to throw it out. It's just. Yeah. It's and the thing, the thing for, for the person that asked that question on the call, um, when you put together a two piece rod in terms, I yeah. taught, told you how to take it apart if it's frozen, but when sure. you put it together, don't line it up directly perfect and seed it. Line it up right. so it's a little bit off, and then your you push you're, you're, and pull, you're, you're, and you, you'll feel it kind of chunk, and it, yes. then it's not coming out. No. Huh. And so there is, there is a right and wrong way to do that, but yeah. I think the, the feral designs, to Ryan's point, and I completely agree, now compared to 25 years ago are night and day. Mm -hmm. They're way better now. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh -huh. Very cool. Good stuff. I love so it, I was... Uh, this is kind of slightly off topic, but you guys know I love chasing all kinds of species of fish now that I'm in an area that has them. But I was contemplating, I'm thinking about getting, I, you're going to laugh at me, Eric. Go I'm ahead. Thinking about, because I, I, I have a love for steelhead fishing and I still love a spinning rod fort and, you know, your little floating beads and all that. And, you know, talking with Brooks from Cortland, he, uh, I might get into fly fishing. And so I was, curious, I was curious a few weeks back and I, I yes. jumped on the St. Croix website and I looked at the fly rods and I'm like, shit. So I sent a bunch of pictures and text <laughs> messages to Brooks. I'm like, <laughs> where do I even start, dude? Oh, oh. yeah. That's a whole start with using one of Brooks's and then see if you like it. <laughs> right. Yeah, it depends on what you're doing. I mean, smallies, you can cover everything with a nine foot seven or nine foot eight weight. 100%. Um, obviously, your trout's more five, six, four. Spring Creek is three and four. Uh, mm -hmm. So, the, and obviously, by the weight of that rod, when I say six, seven, eight, that's more in, a, in accordance to the weight of the line you're throwing. Because uh -huh. in fly fishing, you're casting the line and not the loop, not the the fly. The line's what's weighted, not the lure. It's opposite of diametrically opposite of spinning and casting. So, yeah. just make sure. And one thing I would say though, if you're going to buy one fly rod to get into smallmouth get something you want to throw the heaviest thing you've got you can always throw something lighter yeah but it's really hard to throw a big deer hair wind resistant cone faced fly on a six weight it's just mm. going to bog it down so just kind of think that through well, travis I'm, if you want to get into that yeah i'd love to jump on the phone with you sometime that'd be yeah. really cool you'd be well, you'd be I, really good at it I, no doubt i think my first well i specifically because because of the steelhead and the salmon uh, that I want to target, I, I would be yep. more into that route. Um, but I also wouldn't mind if I'm going to jump on board there is maybe doing, looking in the center pinning, which I know is totally different. Mm -hmm. I mean, to me, it looks the same, right? Just from a, a, a fishing standpoint, but I know there's two, there are two different techniques. Um, and I kind of fought that forever because I always, it just felt foreign to me. You know, I've used a, a fly rod in the past, but just that whole deal is just foreign. But I'd like to get into it, so I would, I'd be interested in getting your guys' recommendations. When well, when you're out. you're in good shape because a salmon, yeah. a, a, not salmon, but a steelhead rod is a seven or eight weight, okay. which is the juice for smallmouth. Really? So okay. it's perfect. Oh, it's the exact same rod. You can do the same thing with absolutely. Yep. Yeah, you don't want to oh. take a six weight to a steelhead fight. <laughs> <laughs> well, he's gonna he's he's gonna hand it to you. You'll you'll get bites all day, but he's gonna hand yeah, it to you. <laughs> yeah, for sure. For, for those sure. of you that uh I mean Brooks from Cortland, Cortland braid, he's he's or Cortland line, they make some great braid that I use. Uh I took him smallmouth fishing about two years ago and he brought a bunch of fly rods with him and I just because that's what he does, and I just looked at him like he was uh you know from another another planet. But mm -hmm. uh did he catch know, one on it? Uh I 
let him use all my rods. I said, I'll get you set up right here, bud. You know, we're, we're throwing swim baits and stuff. He just, he didn't know, but he brought I didn't know if you were going to, where the fish were shallow, where you, I wouldn't even know. Like a, I, I don't know. I don't think, well, he no, knew. I mean, what are you kidding me? Okay. Well, well listen, guys, how, if like, you like, like, saying, like some of those flats we were on. Like, yes. You know, how were you on, on, on the fly rod air? Tell me. Oh, on I want to hear. Take me to those areas we were fishing in April. Six to eight foot of water, right? Oh man, I I would just throw a streamer. Yeah, so, April 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 a little minnow. different. I mean, but April's sure. a little different. But if you get up in June, May, late May, early June, in Wisconsin, there's I I would bet a lot that there's certain fly presentations specifically specifically when you get around that emerging stage of a mayfly, where a fly will sure. beat anything. I'm telling yeah, you, if exactly. you there's there's two or three patterns. One's just subsurface, and another one's when they're in their wing stage. That when you see all those little dimples that look like bluegills in June, those ain't bluegills. Those are giant smallmouth coming up, and all you see, they look like oh, porpoises. Yeah. Come. Oh, they're yeah. sipping those mayflies, and there's yep. two flies we have that absolutely crush them up there. Dude, I'm oh, yeah. coming for that, man. Uh, it, how shallow are those uh, fish eating the mayflies? Six to eight, four to three? Ooh, one. Six to eight in clear water, they'll come. Just watch them come up and eat it. Absolutely, oh, yeah. but a, a lot of it's a little shallower than that. For, you know, the typical That's four to five perfect. foot deal, but it, they oh, cannot. They can't not eat it. The only mistake you can make <laughs> is impart too much action on it. Yeah, you start ah, stripping it. It doesn't look like yeah. a, may, a mayfly yeah. is a non predatory deal when it's yeah. laying on the water. It doesn't yeah. like propel all over the place. The reason why they yeah. come down and land is they're laying eggs. So it's when they like come a, down and oh land, gosh, yeah. that's when they're vulnerable. You got to let it sit and they'll eat it. Yeah. You'll catch all that's of them. That's crazy, man. It's <laughs> it like is. trout with a stonefly hatch. He's totally. to in January and catch yep. stonefly hatches, man. And it just would skitter across the water. He had two patterns, a subsurface and a surface one, man. Those trout, they just could not not eat it. It would have some of my most enjoyable days on the water. I'd go a little Dude. too. I have a two weight up there, sitting right up there, man. Two weight, four weight. Six yeah. weight, eight weight. I've bone fished uh, the flats in the Bahamas. Um, have you ever gone saltwater chase the bone fish? Yeah, I've done the tarpon, bone fish, snook, permit. I love all it. That permit every. Is, is there anything better than that? Well, saltwater any... fish, the way God designed them is their tails are freak show big compared to their bodies. It's ridiculous. And you, you hook a you hook a fifteen inch bone fish and it'll outfight any freshwater fish you'll ever hook up. Travis, your yeah. your line yeah. is I caught a fourteen pound four ounce bonefish, Dan. I oh my on, good on, on a nine nine That's ten. A it was giant. <laughs> it was IGFA world record. I got the picture on my phone. I have to show giant. you. Forty five minute fight on an eight oh. weight. Oh, oh yeah, and, man. And the guide would not sign the card. I had to tip it the picture, the length, the girth, and he's like, you know why he didn't want to. He didn't want the attention brought to his lodge because wow. he didn't like the clientele that wanted to chase world records because they pressed him too much. He, he'd been with people on the boat that all they cared about was setting some record or was all about the double digit bone. And he goes, man, mm -hmm. he goes, I got a good life down here, man. Leave it alone. I bugged him all day. I offered him a thousand dollars extra. <laughs> he didn't do it. Charlie Nemore was his name. I've never what heard of one that big. My biggest ever is six pounds. I mean, that's, pound four that's ounces. ridiculous. Yep. Yeah, that, that's unbelievable. I, I'm going to find it for you right now. I got to show you. I want to show you. I got to show you. Keep talking, Trav. What do you got? No, I. It's that's interesting. I know nothing about it, but I, I don't want to circle back. Oh, my my, fun. my first Mayfly experience was probably like a real, true, amazing smallmouth bite. Was in Wisconsin. <laughs> Um, early C like it was, it was probably mid May, uh, when this happened. And just like you said, it was, we were, it was my first, it was dead calm. Right. And so mm -hmm. we could really like, there was some crazy stuff going on. Oh, you see that, that bonefish body, that Charlie Nemo was six foot eight. Wow. That bonefish goes across both of our bodies. Is wow. that crazy? <laughs> As a giant 45 minute fight, man. Mm -hmm. Yep. But but anyways, we caught them. Andros uh, Islands in the Bahamas, some of the biggest bonefish in the world. Sorry. That's fine. Yeah. Yeah. Andros Island Bonefish Lodge, if you're interested. You have to go down there one day. It's extraordinary. Someday. Wow. Yeah. But the but the whole Mayfly deal uh for me that day, since I didn't have any uh I probably could have used a marabou, but we ended up because they were used to feeding up, that was my 
That was the earliest I actually caught them on a, it, the only thing I had in my box because I didn't really have my top waters with me in mid-May because I didn't think I would really need them. Uh, it was one of them old, and you probably know this, Eric. It was a Savage Gear, kind of a fat. Oh, sport yeah. Short with a little prop on the back. I know you're talking about the, the cicada one. Treble hook, I believe. The cicada, kind of cicada look. And that, that's what did it. That was a pretty fun bite, but I've never had that experience since. So I'll tell you something that's about mayfly, mayfly fishing for smallmouth, and it's really a lot of people don't know this, and fly fishing taught me this, and I didn't learn it. it this was taught to me even through fly fishing, but the mayfly actually comes at the, the nymph comes out of soft bottom. So a lot of people will fish rock reefs mm. and catch those big drake mayflies and they see the wings yeah. and they're throwing the little pop bar and letting it sit and they get a small mouth. All the mayfly hatches on. What they don't realize is those mayflies are getting blown in from somewhere else. So the key uh. is, and I do this in Wisconsin, actually, Ryan, a couple of lakes you've shown me, I'm fishing areas during the mayfly hatch people would never dream of when the wind is down because I'm looking for muck. I'm looking for old rotten vegetation and muck and not the ah. classic smallmouth looking stuff. That's when you go subsurface and throw something black, a little, a little hair jig or a little power grub and just Very wreck interesting. Them. You absolutely wreck them and nobody's doing it because they're How all in the classic rock reefs. And the, those, those, those fish they're catching, sure, they're eating mayflies, but they're getting blown in from somewhere where they're actually coming out of the mud or spinning down on the surface and landing out of the air. Those are the rock How fish. But the nymph ones um, un, under the water, which are just as good or better, are coming out of soft bottom. Huh. Yep. Very interesting. I can't, I can't That's... believe you let the cat out of the bag about the smoke. Hey, <laughs> we're spreading the love, man. We're on this show. We're I knew it. I mean, listen, <laughs> Charles and I talked about it. I said, these guys are going to talk rods, but they're going to talk some serious oh, I know. Too. You were excited. Which is it. awesome. I was just, totally yeah. stoked, man. Yeah. We we, yeah. we we talked bonefish. We talked steelhead. And you're getting into fly fishing. <laughs> we talked travel yeah. rods. We talked new stuff. Dude, I've, been, I mean, I've been thinking smoke grub ever since owner released that new uphead jig or the up. You guys see that? Uh, owner, uh, owner released a new jig head. Yeah, they released a new jig. It's like a, on a, Ooh. it's on a ninety hook, but it's got more weight positioned at the top. Like, Ooh. okay, this isn't any, you know, like breaking news. But if you yeah. really want to see your jig on forward facing sonar, especially if you're using a spark shad and you're, yeah. you're targeting fish like, you know, ninety feet, uh, sure. you know, put a football head on the front because you can see it better on forward facing. Mm. Okay, mm. Well, they made. They made a head. It's not a forward facing head. It's a it's a shimmer rig head, essentially yep. for the front of the boat that positioned the weight heavier on the on the hook shank on a ninety like a crappie hook. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so your jig has more of an actual wiggle to it. I'm like that's Ooh. got that's got smoke grub written all over it. Dude, I was just looking at the uh, owner's website today. Um, Let's see, yeah, it, uh, literally I see? is. I, was it on their catalog? No, it probably wasn't because I don't well, think they've updated their catalog. Yeah. It's going to be an iCast release, or did it, is it I think it's going, market it could be a purpose? classic release. Ooh, huh. even better. Yeah, yeah. My buddy Billy Kramer's been sponsored by Owner for a long time, but he's not much of a fairy wand guy. But anyway, <laughs> but, oh, man. <laughs> he got his ass kicked on the Potomac. I love it because I'm, I'm the spinning rod guy that he takes out to practice. I mean, I, I throw power right along with him. Right, I, I junk fish. I do it all, and. Um, he was telling me about this term, man. He literally had it won. He was in on the Potomac River. He was up north in grass, and the field basically followed him. And I think it was a Toyota series. And uh, not the field, but you you get it. It happens in multi-day tournaments, right? The pressure started to come into the grass, and his co-angler had a spinning rod and a weenie worm, he called it. <laughs> and literally caught 17 pounds behind him. And he, he says, Galasso, I'll never not have a, a fairy wand of the boat again with a rigged up with a weenie worm. I've got him drop shotting now, Travis. What right. do you think of that? He's yeah. drop shotting straight braid, though. I'm like, Kramer, what are you doing? Oh, they don't oh. care. They'll bite her if they're ready. I'm like, you're killing me, Kramer. Stop it. You're talking crazy. And then I'll catch fish behind him with a drop shot on fluorocarbon. I'm <laughs> getting in there, Travis. I'm getting in there. We're going to have Billy Kramer on because he is All literally right. one of the OG river rats on the Potomac. He guided there for years. He's won more boats and motors and cash. Yeah. Uh, him and his partner just won um, Anglers of the Year last year in the Potomac teams, which is the most competitive on the uh, Potomac River. And uh, he's so old school it hurts sometimes. But uh, we're, we're, we're getting in there, Travis. He's drop shotting. How about that? That's the uh, the owner hook, the owner hook is called the 
Just screenshot it. The owner oh. owner range roller head. Oh, cool. That's new. Excellent. Yes. Thank you for the heads up. Travis, I'll get some and we'll uh we'll All fish right. them. Let's when do I go it. up there. Um, owner range owner range. Sorry, sorry, one more time. Owner range roller head. Roller head. range roller head. Thank you. Got it. Um I post a comment here. Uh, uh, Ernest, welcome, Ernest. That's a new name. Um, yes. What's the best St. Croix victory spinning rod for jerk baits? Um, I wouldn't mind. Uh, I'll, I think it's uh, for me personally. I think it's the six eight. I want to say it's a medium extra fast. Does that sound That's right? The one. Yeah. No. Nope. Yeah. That's there's 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 actually there's there's two. The six eight MXF for the one ten size, no doubt. You start getting down into that 78s or the Mega Bass Juniors. Yeah. That 7.3 MLXF is the deal. It throws it a mile. Obviously, your cadence isn't straight down with it. It's a little more of a side sweep, but it's yeah. unbelievable. So, so there's, Great yeah, I would, yep, I, I would say that it depends on the size of the jerk bait, but the average like yeah. Mega Bass 110, yeah, 6.8 MXF. Okay. okay. Or for the juniors, because I know Ernest, we, we, we had a conversation uh, okay. a couple of weeks back. He's the Bass Lab customer, Travis. Okay. And so we, we fish some of the same things. He's a tournament fisherman like yep. I am. And we exchanged some good information. So it's a great question, Ernest. Uh, I was going to ask it, Travis. Thank you for highlighting it, man. Very good. I was, I was bringing that up. I like it. Uh, Travis and I had an experience. I've always preferred throwing a lot of jerk baits believe it or not on a spinning rod because my wrists yeah. literally i don't I, I i must not have that you know how some guys like when you watch them do a jerk bait their wrists like they can bend it i don't know if i injured my wrist playing sports all my life but it's so much easier for me to snap on a spinning rod and um anyway so it's really cool to to see that uh it's it's being adopted dan you got something to say ryan what's up nah, i'm gonna i'm gonna you, you need you need a you need a trigon 68 mxf uh is that so a bait caster or is this a spinning rod bait, bait caster if you got any wrist okay. issues yeah that's the one to get yeah. interesting yeah yeah i don't i not one of my favorite things to do it is a powerful technique though for sure so so i have a uh I have a technique that I use a lot midsummer for smallmouth up on the St. Lawrence River. And I I've been able to talk some clients in the past to try this with me. And, and we can definitely catch fish if if they're comfortable. But we fish a lot of the Mega Pass, Mega Bass 110 Plus, but we're we're really we're giving it a lot of action. And uh, the the biggest thing I see. When I'm doing it, my wrist will hurt, right? I will feel it yeah. for a little while, and then you kind of get used to it, and you're good for the day. But if you haven't done that type of, of jerk baiting, where we're really, really hitting that bait hard um, three, four times, and then quick pause, and we're, we're ripping that jerk bait, um, working shallow, making making quick casts, covering uh, a current exposed current side of a small island. So you're only making five Very to cool. eight casts before you move on and okay. i think maybe if you guys are struggling with a bait caster to do that maybe a spinning rod will, will work better um most of the time I have a, I have a question. My, my clients kind of i can tell i've had people just they can't do it it just hurts I, are you doing a with a plus one or a plus two the plus mm. one plus ones yeah i i cannot i haven't had as much success with the plus two i bought a bunch but i just can't seem to uh, I can't seem to get it going right. That's just Does anybody think I'm crazy? I watched, I think it was an In Fisherman episode where they were jerking with a braid and fluorocarbon, pretty long leader. Sure. But it, it got the bait moving. Yes. And like it was oh, warmer yeah. water, sure. more aggressive. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, no, Does anybody all, do that? Does anybody it, do that? It's braid when you're ripping it like that. Yeah. Oh, yeah. oh but yeah. you're doing it on a bait caster with braid. Yeah, you can. If that was the wow. uh, that was the deal pre again pre live sonar for uh, we've got the was the the Green Bay the big Green Bay open or the Sturgeon Bay open over here okay that was how the Canadians were kicking everybody's rear ends as they were using four thousands with braid and then floral leaders and they were strolling I mean like long line strolling jerk baits over long points oh. and rock bars then that's how they were doing it yeah really. Yep. Because you could cast it on braid a mile. 
I kicked my around a number of years doing it. <laughs> like yeah. literally, no. like literally, like braid on no, anything. But then they're making that cast, and are they doing the typical real strolling technique then, where they're taking their trolling motor and moving line? Yeah, put it on ten. Mean. Drop your bait and put it on ten, and then oh. start crisscrossing patterns. Yeah. Oh, oh. is that legal? I Not guess it anymore. is. Not anymore. Not anymore. Oh, you mean they made it? Yeah, okay, guys. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Strolling rhymes with plus trolling. you're gonna get that jerk bait down even deeper than you could obviously yeah. on the initial yeah. path. So can't even imagine. Uh, who talked about that? Um we had him on the show, Eric. Canadian. So if I were uh, to be in the back of the boat with Travis and he's scoping and he just happens tongue. to have that trolling motor on 10, he's scanning like this, and I drop my jerk bait, my 110 plus one with my braid to fluorocarbon leader, and we're on a flat, and I just engage the reel with almost all my line out. Would I be <laughs> cheating in the back? I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> there you go. Uh since Dan gave up the curly tail grub thing, you might as well be using that out of the back of the boat. <laughs> Probably. <laughs> they still eat a grub. I fish the grub. Trails. I, yeah. I, it's, it's, it's the unsung hero. I threw it on a football head, and I'm not, I'm not scoping. He's putting us around fish, obviously. But I got to tell you, I love the new uh, Z-Man football head. I'll never throw a button head again and rock. Forget about it. That's my go-to right now. And then I was throwing a G-tail from Rains, little three-inch G-tail. It was like a sand color, just like a goby. They love that thing. I think it's the sleeper of all of it. It's, it's. I don't know. No, is, Does anybody throw a grub anymore? Except for yeah. Dan, you don't, I've never seen you throw a grub. What are you talking about? You talking I, about? I throw a grub all the time, certain times a year. You had went, never thrown a grub with me, Travis. What do you mean? a video on it. Only because we, I talked about a video and I brought the grubs. Mm, it's a great follow-up yeah. bait if they miss it on a topwater too. Since big time, is it really? Oh since, wow! Yeah, big time. <laughs> yeah. Well, me and Travis have never caught smallies on topwater yet. Do they not eat it on? Uh, would they eat topwater where you guys live? Right? Sure. That's that a joke. Yeah. <laughs> is that yeah. A, is that a, no? Is that a I mean, joke? it's a joke because Travis and I will. I mean, Travis, do they eat? Top water on the St. Lawrence and Ontario. Yes, but I can but count on one hand how many times I've caught them on top. Oh my wow. gosh! There's more. No, no, no. I shouldn't say on the St. Lawrence Lake Ontario. You take me to that, no, no. That, that's all. That's all I'm talking about. St. Lawrence River and Lake Ontario mm. top water. Smallies. If you committed when to it, you would catch that? a good. You could catch a good bag. There's when more. Can we do ways. it? I don't when do it. Will, I, of things. course. Okay. No, I'm talking about having some fun yes, and watching. Okay. Thing. They're not. But they're when? not. It's not like Champlain or Oneida or some inland okay. lakes where they 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 will chase bait and feed up. You, like they're looking I've up. Seen, I, I've I, seen, I got you. I've seen smallmouth. I've seen one smallmouth bust on Lake Ontario one time in my life. Interesting. That's crazy. That's amazing. Wow. Travis, even in that place where that was all that grass, remember where you were hunting that one smallmouth that was really dark? It was shallow. Oh, yeah. Went through that cut and there was sure, grass. Would they... Would yeah. they would they feed in there? Because there's a lot of grass in there. Both, listen, they're opportunities. They're they're if they see something above them, they're yeah. We they're need to crack. do it more. I just don't I do would it. Love That's to try. It. Oh, okay. No, I get it. I get I it. I'm it. just talking about having fun doing something different. You yeah, need to time. you need to throw if you've got an area. If you're not going to like actually pick on a smallmouth when it's on a bed, which I mean, it, there's different schools of thoughts on you know sure. ethically as an angler, yep, but sure. smallmouth absolutely hate. At least in our area, top water worked over top of their beds. Agreed. Like get they out, hate oh, yeah. the shadow. Do they really? Yeah, they absolutely hate it. Oh yeah, wow, we, that's crazy. We've got what's your, years what's that we have laid ice out up here. Uh, we've mm -hmm. got a number of flowages, and those fish are just. I think those fish are completely wired differently than our Great Lakes fish in Schwamigan Bay or our mm. natural lake fish, like our flowage fish. That they're just different. And what's a flowage fish? What do you so mean? A flowage, a, typically a flowage fish for us is a, a flowage is like a, a kind of like a northern reservoir that okay. is very dependent on snow runoff for oh. the level. And it's typically the, the lake levels are typically or the flowage level is typically dictated by the Corps of Engineers. Uh, OK. And it typically feeds other natural lakes. But oh, uh, fascinating. Yeah. So flowages, on the other hand, they don't get a lot of fishing pressure uh, because it's kind of like this graduated thing that you get to learn to fish mm. out 
in Florida. Or, 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 or learn to run it without breaking your lower unit. That's yes. The whole or, <laughs> yes. You've, you've, you've sacrificed a number of lower units to be able to run them. <laughs> oh, <Yes. wow. laughs> but they're typically, they're typically, the fish don't get as big, but there's typically mm. more. So like your big okay. fish in a flowage is like four and a half to five pounds. Sure. You know, that's like, that's like a really big fish, but our flowage fish tend to be more orange than they are brown. Oh, and wow. They go, they go shallow right after ice out. Like mm -hmm. what? they, they go shallow right after ice out and you can catch topwater fish on some of the flowages up by us two weeks after ice out. If it's late ice. That's crazy. Yeah. Because well, part of that, part of that is because they're very tannic. Yes. The water is very, oh, very tannic. So it drives them shallow. Safer. Absolutely. Oh, they're shallow yeah. year round. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Tannic water. Wow. And though you said those fish will eat. Top water two weeks after I saw Delhi top water. I, I would not have believed it. My first year living in Northern Wisconsin, uh, one of our, our engineers at St. Croix took me out. That's a musky guy. And he's like, Hey, I always see these smallmouth up shallow. And <laughs> the musky guys are just kind of waiting their time, you know, for the season yeah. to start. And he's like, let's ah. see if we go catch one. I'm like, Holy cow. And you get up there mm. and all of a sudden you see them kind of like milling around, like they're getting ready to make their beds. Yeah. You know, like they get in kind of that circular pattern and they're just kind of like really rampant moving around on the yeah. shelves and uh yeah i mean they just absolutely hate top water. oh god it's fun yeah for a person that oh. i'm a diehard reaction and evasion vixen guy and uh, uh i yeah. thought i was going to be able to retire early based on my inventory of them until they brought them out again now i see the price just went tanked oh, really? well well do there's an original okay. question yeah. are are they the same I don't know. There's a whole, there's some drama behind that. So who always there's, is there's some mega so, drama I, between them. And I Tackle. mean, honestly, you know what I'm saying? I mean, I know a little bit of something who knows, man, I'd still, if you want the OG, you got to go to this guy right here on the screen. Yeah. But yeah, Vixens, it top water for us is a staple for, for uh small month up here. If you're not, if you're not scoping, you're throwing top water. I love it. Well, that's awesome. I'd be in the dirt. Don't top water. <laughs> Is there anything better than a smallmouth topwater bite? No, there's it's nothing so worse than when they miss it and it five feet out of the air and you got to oh. have a church on so, Sunday. So, so, so we, 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 we have yeah. our Smith Mountain Lake Championship being screwed really, right? We find a great topwater bite mix, largey and smallie, right? So first, first air, zinging out, like 65-pound braid, big topwater. Striper 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 the stripers have pushed all of our bass out so we get to the next shoal throwing a, a spook full size boom, boom, boom. this small mouth literally blasted i hook up with him he runs hard and then i i've never seen a fish jump higher and it was like at the end of a long cast <laughs> that fit, it looked like that fish was five feet out of the air and through the bait and i'm just like i saw the whole fish broadside i'm like five five pounds would have set us up great, man. It was a heartbreaker, but uh, the, the spectacular way they just uncork on it. It's crazy. You know, one I thing really, it, one thing really interesting we learned on the upper Mississippi River for smallmouth, and this can be a spook, yeah. a sammy, a boing, a vixen, or yeah. whatever, any type of sure. walking bait. Yeah. Is there's a lot of, there's a lot of advantages, obviously, for braid because you can throw it a mile and they'll, there's yep. no stretch. So you pin them up far out. Yep. But, and this yeah. is more smallmouth than largemouth, and we learned this the hard way. Tell a lot me. of us now are running a braid to about a one foot mono leader. And the reason why- I do it all the and, time, big game. Well, the, 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 the reason why we're doing it up there is those smallmouth, way more than largemouth, when yep. they hit that thing, they hit it so violently, it'll foul that braid in the hook. They do it mm. all, they'll knock it out of the water and they'll foul the hooks up. And if you put a foot of mono in it, they will not do that. And I was yep. taught that from a river hammer about 10 years ago and I never forgot Heck it. Yeah, man. I do it. I do it on a buzz bait too. We won our Gaston championship in part, uh, buzz yep. bait, buzz bait and, and a leader on top of it, man. Uh -huh. Great positive hook set. You throw them out. All right. Here's my question for the top water guys in small mouth. What style hook are you using? EWG or round band? Do you mix them? Do you go straight round band, straight EWG? I need to know. Dan, you going on this one first? Or... Yeah, so I like that uh, KVD's got had a mustad hook that just they yeah. just don't Perfect. not get. And then another another hook I went to last year on all of my standstill baits, like my pop R's, my Ricos. If I'm not okay. if I'm not fishing them fast, I'm letting them right. sit and they're dimpling right. them. 
I went, yep. I went with Ichikawa. I'm telling you right oh, now, that, they're great that, hooks. That, that hook, you can't breathe on it and not get it. It's, it's huh. the best hook for that kind of bait. Personally, I've found yet. I just don't miss them with it. That's so there's awesome two a walking bait. I'm not using that. Um, mm -hmm. I'm using that. It's kind of a hook that's turned in a little bit at yeah. the point. Yeah. Are you talking about the KVD Mustad Elite? Ab unbelievable hook. The ultra yeah, point? I, that yeah, one? I, I changed my, all my top waters out to that hook right there. Yep. Very if I want to cool. catch them. I mean, yeah, I yeah. don't do that with yeah. all my baits, but <laughs> there's always yeah. that one box you're taking for the right day. And yep. Sure. Oh, um, yeah. Sure. I, I want to share with you guys real quick and, 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 and get Ryan or Dan's opinion on this. So when we're talking spook spooks and things like that, um, I'm throwing on the victory. Uh, what is it? The seven, five medium, heavy fast. Okay. I like that rod. Um, and then on my, like a, like a pop R I do like the victory seven, two moderate, heavy MHM probably MH, MHMF. Yes. Yep. Okay. Is that good? Like, am I in the right ballpark? Yeah, there? I, I think that's seven. Now, this is a, this is a, can be debated till the cows come home, but I don't like mm. a seven, five for a spook. Cause I can't get my walk cadence, right? That's my opinion. I'm mm. throwing it on a seven, two HM right now believe it or not really? i'm throwing any type of wall oh because they Same you, here. You, it it cuts like a freaking slalom skier first of all and secondly they don't miss it because that rod deflects when they eat it really well and the, they, the, the fish gets the bait but one thing i've been doing lately is i'm not throwing any walking top water on the river right now if it really matters unless it's got three hooks on it end of story mm. I, all my, I don't, I'm not throwing my boings up there or anything because it, three hooks over two hooks is a game changer in terms of yeah. the number of bites you get to the number of one you're swinging over the boat. Strike to catch ratio, man. That's what it's all about. All right. Here's another question. So, top so, water related. Oh, go ahead. Sorry, sorry Travis. What I thought rod you were are done. you suggesting then? Go What's ahead. that? What rod are you suggesting? Then a 7-2 HMI act in legend mm -hmm. tournament. So what I'm throwing a spook on a hundred percent of the I'm talking about a full size spook. Yeah. I, and actually, I throw a lot of saltwater spooks. It's a, it's about the same size, but it's got three hooks in it. That's a, yeah, that's a rod a lot of us are throwing. You just don't miss them with it. They don't get awesome. off. All right. Awesome. All right. Favorite buzz bait rod, if you throw a buzz bait. Ryan, I'll let you go. I've got mine. Uh, yeah, I think yours is a 73 MHF. I you got it. Yeah. Um, I threw mine on an IAC glass rod. So I'm probably mm -hmm. the odd man out here. Um, Why? I don't think so. Yeah. Explain. Explain. Um, I screwed around with the buzz bait a lot last year. And honestly, I go back and forth between the 73 MHF and the 72 HM. You know, I don't, there's also the contingency that throws it on the 74 MHM too, which is, I haven't really seen the advantage to that yet, but it's mm -hmm. probably a 50 50 split between the 73 medium heavy fast and the 72 uh, HM as far as a route to throw a buzz bait on. The biggest thing that I have found for throwing a buzz bait is, taking everything off your buzz bait and using the, I use the sugar bee from strike King. They had like mm -hmm. a sugar bee with the, uh, the head that's separate from the whole body. And I sure. started using the last tech as my, my main meat on my buzz yep. bait and your startup is so quicker or so much quicker. Cause um, of the float. Yeah. Cause of the float. And it really changed buzz bait fishing for me. Yeah. yeah. I am not a huge buzz bait. Fishing does not come naturally to me. And then yeah, I fish, we I fished we, uh, the UFC frog tournament out in the California Delta. There was a lot of did guys. Did you that, really? Yeah. The double, buzz, the double buzz is still a deal out there. Like it is. Is it really? Oh, yeah. And there's a lot of, in that tournament, there's a lot of hybrid concoctions because you have to fish a hollow body oh, frog yeah. all day. And, yeah. um, you know, that's where the tackle frog really became popular was in that tournament and that whole deal out there. But mm -hmm. fished, my tournament partner fished a double buzz with a hollow body frog most of the day and it was the deal and i fished it most of the day too and that inspired me to come back home and be like i have to be a buzz bait fisherman now huh so, the double yeah, the, buzz the thing, bait for sure that just doesn't get thrown a lot for the sure. double buzz yeah. with a hollow body frog on it though that's per the that's rules of the crazy. tournament you gotta fish that's, cra that's crazy so i don't know how did you do that oh, that's yeah. cool i mean wow all right the thing i'll mention on that this and this is more for the listeners out there 
is a buzz bait the biggest mistake people make and i understand we're throwing it around cover and heavy wood and the lay downs and all whatever is yeah. if the rod's too stiff they're going to struggle with the bait tumbling when you cast it yeah. it has to have enough deflection to let that thing catapult out there aerodynamically so it doesn't yeah. do that that's yeah. why people give up on them because they're a nightmare to cast especially if it starts yeah. blowing yeah. So that that's what makes that 7.3 MH, MHF so special is I can throw it all day long on 30 pound braid and tumble it yeah. twice where yeah. I've played with almost all of our rods and, yeah. and I'm not just picking on St. Croix. I'm talking about all bass rods. No, if all manufacturers. Oh, they're, they're, if you don't get that right, you're going to end I up, agree. you know, you know what I'm talking about. It goes out there and goes. It, and it, you, yeah. It, it, yeah. It's yeah. like trying to throw a shad wrap on a, on a rod that's too stiff. It doesn't load. Absolutely. It's not proper. Yep. So, um, yeah. So spinning rod wise, because I I'm a I'm a huge fan of early spring cranking and I love a shad wrap and I throw it on a spinning rod. I throw a lot of my flat side balsas on a spinning rod. So what St. Croix, because I do a lot of talking about this, um, you know, on the show and uh, I'm a nut for balsa. It's hard to find not a custom made rod that I have. But, uh, you know, I don't have a ton of them because, you know, rod builders are not cheap. Um, what in your lineup would you pick to throw a shad wrap or a flat side, a lighter flat sided balsa mm -hmm. crankbait on a spinning rod? I think we got two different ones on this one. Dan, you go first. Uh, okay. All right. Yeah, I don't throw them on anything heavier than an MLF. Medium, mm -hmm. light, fast. So that's going to be six, yep. six or seven foot. I don't yep. do I don't do a lot of that. Sure. Um, but but when I, but I I used to throw a shad wrap, which is the yeah. best example because those are a nightmare to cast on a. They are a nightmare. So there um, you go. Just aerodynamically, on. the way they go out, um, <laughs> but the fish bite it so well, we got to figure out a way to get it out there. So that uh -huh. that six six seven foot medium light fast is is kind of the juice. But I'm not sure. I'm not sure the best rod for that's been built yet. I I, I think that there's some mm. opportunity there, and I'll and that's all I'm going to say. I throw it. <laughs> I'll yeah. test it for you. There you go. Eric, hold that up again. I want to see that color. Yeah. The two colors the bass can see the best, if you guys didn't know. Bass can see two colors, red and green. Those are their only color receptors they have in their eyes. Bass. Yeah. He so actually, we brought out. You talked to a bass and asked him that, and he told okay. you that? No, they study their eyes, and they oh, see their okay. rod color cones. It's true. Right. And the bites prove it. Mm -hmm. Green pumpkin, arguably the best color ever invented for bass, right? Okay. The other one you love to throw yoga pants black or uh, slightly. Why? Because bass's eyes are trained for contrast. Got it. This is the science proves it, man. Anyway, let's right, go ahead, Ryan. Ryan. What were you gonna say? We've got a uh, we released a BFS crankbait rod mm -hmm. last year in Mojo Bass. Um, seven yeah. one medium light moderate fast uh, mm -hmm. casting rod. Okay. Yeah. And yeah. and I I believe that that's like ninety percent there as a shad wrap rod, even though it says BFS on it. You know, everybody yeah. thinks if you throw BFS, it got to be that big. You know. No. Doesn't have to be. Mm -hmm. People no. have been doing BFS for a long time. They just didn't didn't realize it. We also yeah. have a seven two medium moderate in uh, Mojo Bass in the spinning rods, and uh, that's that's the that's what I'm using if I throw a shad wrap shad wrap, which is a very limited amount of time. But yeah, I'm a, I'm a, a jerk bait fanatic. Ah, fair, yeah. man. Well, you do you fish for smallmouth more than largemouth? Uh, it all it kind of has. Or are you changed. kind of like 50 50? It used to be 50 50. Um, uh, it probably was 40 40 60. Um, and now 60 it's smally 40 large or no, the other it used way? To be largemouth oh. way, without question. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. And then, Ryan, uh, what was that? I'm sorry, I just yeah. want to take notes. What was that shad wrap rod? either the seven two medium moderate spinning rod and mojo bass okay or the seven one medium light moderate fast casting rod and mojo bass okay got it yeah okay yeah Did, didn't a guy win last was it open kind of, kind of trapping the bank I don't think he was scoping much. There was a traditional win this weekend. Was there? Was that yeah. in the NFL or was that? Was there an open this weekend? I'm all confused. Yeah, yeah. there was an open. It was the, it was the open. He, uh, he won the open. Yeah, oh, cheater. Or, oh, yeah. He won the open. He was trapping. 
and sure. he wasn't looking as he wasn't doing this. He was literally found the win, found the bank, obviously saw clearly. Yeah, but you can see that with 362. Yeah, and we're gonna see a guy rock in transition. I don't have to very mention- cool. I'm excited. I like it. That's how I would have fished it. I'm gonna I'm not I don't have to mention his name, but there's gonna be a certain YouTuber that's gonna be going nuts over the fact that you know that happened. So <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, <laughs> that's true. It's a, <laughs> no, he fixed that. I think he was in it, wasn't he? And oh he really? Paired, he got no. paired with a guy, and he like his video is Coagler goes after me because I don't know, man. You know, yeah. it's all it's all clickbait. Both sides of the equation is very clickbaity these days. It's, it's a laughable. It's a laughable moment. I just want to talk fishing, man. So that's cool. Thank you for the notes because I know a lot of people. Um, you know, they still like to crank a little bit. So it's good. Mm-hmm. It's good. It's good. Mm-hmm. Huh. Travis, you're in deep thought. Uh, I'm sorry. I'm just reading a message. Guy said, we have to go tomorrow to catch burbot. We can load the buckets. They're going to be spawning under this full moon. <laughs> We're staying out till midnight. I got a little excited. I'm sorry. I'm, I'm All right, bud. That's okay. You got bourbon on the mind, man. Uh, I never even heard of that <laughs> fish before tonight. Oh, man. Send me a picture of the burbot meal. Are you going to prepare any burbot for your family and your your parents this week? Well, I actually, it's funny. Before the live stream, <laughs> I went up to my mom and said, "Do you think you could cook these uh, this week?" and And she said yes. And I said, "But what kind of coating do you use?" Because I was because I remember growing up, she would just use flour, and it was kind of yeah, yeah. Uh, we grew up in interest. I I guess we can talk about it. so. We grew up here um, eating all kinds of different things. Um, And believe it or not, it's kind of embarrassing, but uh, so we ate sheep head a lot. Hmm. Yeah. How did it taste? It was okay. I didn't mind it, but yeah, I mean, it's a giant fish. I don't think we knew. uh, I would catch them from the the creek a mile down the road here. I'd bring buckets back. I was young, eight, nine, 10, whatever. Dad would flay them up and, and they would eat them like it was normal. And nowadays, who knows? You know, I probably, yeah, but eat. I mean, I mean, maybe it is a good eating fish. We just it's pissed off is. that they're bugging us when we're smallmouth fishing, right? It's not the target species, yeah. They I mean, eat, who would have thought they, they eat, eat a burbot? They eat suckers in Missouri, swear to God. Really, the guys yeah. claim they're amazing. I'm like, you've got to be kidding. Me. <laughs> see, see, don't knock it till you try it. Right? I, I'm I'm not sure I'm going to go there, but they claim it's good. <laughs> no. <laughs> no, I mean there are some people that like uh, what's the what's the fish that has an acquired taste? Oh, there's a bunch of them out there. No, it's one that I'm thinking of. Freshwater. Oh, oh man, I know it. Oh my, it's coming to me. I'll think of it in a second. Mm. It, it's not your normal like. You know, something sweet and flaky and white and delicious. Yeah, it can have a pretty strong taste. Hmm. Like in Scandinavia, pickled herring. Oof, no thank you. But maybe it's delicious. I don't know. I love herring. Do you really? Oh, Shad. Shad row. Oh, no. Fried Shad row. Right. (laughs) But people think that's a delicacy. (laughs) Right. Fried Shad row. I saw somebody fry perch row. I, that's what I'm saying. I don't know. I I'm mean, good. you know, has anybody like eaten a sheep? Have in my the, uh, look, carp is supposedly a delicacy in no, Europe. Are you kidding me? I swear. Maybe smoked carp. I don't know, dude. There's some. Have you ever watched the show uh, Bizarre Foods with Andrew Lessman? <laughs> sure. <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh, man. Some of the stuff, man. He even has trouble with it. I but don't anyway. Know. I, I, all I know is I went to Wood Eyes and Winnie County for lunch, and I had a perch sandwich, and it was delicious. Let's, oh, yeah, no doubt. Perch and walleye. Per, perch and walleye. That's pretty darn good. They still do those perch fries in Wisconsin? Yeah. Or is it? What do they yeah. call them? It's either perch or cod. Friday, 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 Friday fish cod? fry. Friday fish fry. Yeah. Cod, like a saltwater cod? No. Yes. No. I don't know. No. Cod. Cod. Yeah. <laughs> God. From, God from the ocean. Yeah. Right. Yeah. yeah. It's like ten dollars. I, I didn't know if there was like a you know a special uh, freshwater cod. No, that you guys no. are catching. No, it's, it's, a, it's, it's it's the season for it. There you go. Oh, gotcha. All right, guys. Listen, it, it's t- it's ten thirty. We uh we covered a lot tonight. We appreciate you guys coming on. 
Uh, we you. could probably talk another couple hours, but we'll You're definitely. Really I'm going uh, to leave these guys. Dan with Ryan, love thing. to have you guys back on in the future. I think it was a, a good it discussion, awesome. and uh, we certainly, certainly appreciate it. Tremendous. Thanks for the opportunity. Appreciate it. Tremendous. Thanks. Really enjoy Thanks it. So much, Always. Guys. You guys, you. great fish and talk, great rod talk. Thank you. We love all it. the best this year. Have a great uh, classic release and then iCast mm -hmm. show. You got it. It'll be Thank great. You guys. We'll all talk right. soon. Tight lines out there. Have a good one. Thank you. Right. Thank you. All right. That was some uh, some good stuff. That's fantastic, man. dude. Man, I mean, literally talking about rods and techniques and actions and they new stuff pitch, coming out. Dude. Those no, those dudes are they're, they're sticks, man. That's pretty cool that uh, you know guys like that are working at that company. Oh yeah. Did yeah. you see my uh my my new pork rind trailer made out of garbage a white garbage. trash bag, bro? The garbage. Yeah, yeah, but on the back of that, I'm gonna throw that up in New York and crank on it. Chunk. I'm catch. bringing it. I'm bringing it. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know about the durability, but we'll we'll work on that. I think it's gonna tear. I don't know. I, I I do think it'll tear, but I I don't. I think it's gonna catch a few before it tears. But I th I've got some ideas on how to strengthen it. But the action's stupid, dude. Stupid. Mm -hmm. Come on, man. Come on, man. Trash bag fishing. That was fun, dude. Good job, man. Listen, get with the family. I know you're out of town. We don't have to do a long show. This was fantastic. Well, I got nothing. I got, I got nothing I to got, do. But we can hang out. Okay. What's on your mind, bro? I don't know. Well, you were really happy at the beginning of the show. What's going on? <laughs> I don't know if I was happy. I mean, you seemed like you were really happy, I genuinely was happy. Up. Yeah. Why were you so pumped up for this show? Because your big sponsors were on, or because you're just pumped up? Uh, you get because you went fishing. Maybe. Dude, that was. So When's the last I'll time you, you were fishing, story. bro? I'll, I'll tell you a funny story. Go ahead. So, day two of being here. I'm going to take hold of my dad out there, right? Yeah. My mom's really upset because she watches the news a lot. And the news oh, is no. telling her to That's stay off no the good. lake. There's no ice. You're going to drown. Blah, blah, blah. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. Yeah. So she's telling my dad it's not good to go out there. You know, they right. can't find sturgeon sparing or there's not a lot of people. The DNR is telling you to stay off the ice. Meanwhile, I mean, I... I I'm out there with a buddy that knows the ice conditions. I'm not an idiot, right? I get out there. I see what we're up right. against. It's not bad at all. A uh, right. couple cracks across and everything's, it, it really got cold the last couple nights. So I go to my dad, I go, listen, we're going fishing, dude. Like, let's go make some memories. You know what I mean? I know mom's yep. a little nervous, but I mean, come on, dude. I've never seen him act this way before either. He, right. I know he's getting older, but it's like, no, he Dude, it's, it's, you never leave your mom alone. You know what I mean? Growing up, like, let's just go ice fishing, man. Okay. Of course, we have to walk, right? We have to walk a good mile plus, maybe two miles. I tell them it's only a mile, right? Right. So we get there early, right? So now he's upset. Not upset, but he's questioning why we're getting up at five. Right. right? Because the best part of it is walking out right before the sun comes up, you know? Okay. And, and seeing the sunrise. Sure. And so I'm out there. We get to the ramp. It's right before sunrise. And so yeah. we start our hike. Well, he's got, I got my, my gear. And then he has a little sled for, for coal to drag him out in. And uh, somehow the sled bottom cracks. So now it's filling up with snow. So the two five gallon buckets and some of the extra gear, like my big underwater camera and some other things I decided to bring out are now yeah. not going to work in the little sled. So now I'm carrying two big buckets because there's no room on my sled. I got coal sitting on the sled. So I'm I'm working hard, right? Sure. And I feel bad for, you know, dad's getting older. He he, he doesn't have to carry all this stuff. He can just walk. It's right. hard enough. Right. So we get out there. We cross the first crack, which, which I knew how to cross. And then there was a, a secondary crack maybe 300 yards away. Yep. I I didn't check my phone because uh, I just figured I knew where the where I crossed. I could figure it out once I got close. Well, I got up to the crack and there was some open water along it. And so now he's asking some questions like, "How far are we going? 
Yeah. Um, and so, <laughs> and so I'm feeling like, you know, we're not going to go to where I caught him the other day. We're going to go where I saw some guys fishing. And I think there's some, would be a good spot. Yeah. So I find a, a way to cross the crack that looks safe. And, yep. uh, and I acted like I knew what I was doing just so he would, you know, feel better about it, step it up and not be 50 yards behind me. And like, let's go do this. Right. Right. So then I start marching another 200 yards. Jeez. And I find a spot that I think is going to be good. Yeah. So I put the ice auger in and I go, and she falls through pretty quick. Oh no, that's never a good sign. A lot faster than I thought. Okay. Holy shit. So dad sees now I'm me. fucking getting nervous. Dad He's sees this. He really starts nervous. He gives me kind of a look like I'm crazy. And I'm still confident. I'm acting like I've been here before. You know what I mean? Like this <laughs> is the spot. Right. There's there was two and a half inches of ice here. That's not good. Granted, it was shallow. It was up north. Well, like when up. you say shallow, how shallow? Three feet. <laughs> What was that? Yeah. The, yeah, what was that? Um, the wood stove, I guess, a log or something. Um, oh. So anyways, we punched four holes. I set up the, the shack, and you can't even see the ice underneath. Like, where we were the other day, there was eight, nine inches. Wow. Um, it was bad, dude. So, And then the big bubbles were coming up out of the hole. Oh, yeah. I'm and, leaving uh, at that point. <laughs> I saw a couple burbot right away swimming through, and uh, I think we caught, <laughs> we had a couple on, and then I, and then it got slow. Like <clears> twenty <throat> minutes into it, I didn't, I didn't see as many fish, so I, I packed up and, and we moved back to better ice. But it was really interesting to see the difference, um, just a few hundred yards make out there. That's crazy, right? Oh. You mean like with thicker ice versus two sure. and a half inches of ice? So where did you move? Towards the shore? Well, we, know where well, I told my dad, I said, we have to go back over the crack. I told him where we have to go. We have to go 150 yards this way, but we can't walk directly to it because this ice is thin and there's another crack right there. We have to go 200 yards back and then 200 yards around. And wow. we did, and we got on better ice. But I'll tell you, it was funny. As I was setting up, there was a group of guys on four-wheelers heading out there. Yeah, and they went with their four wheelers right where we just were on that skinny ice. And oh, I remember them drilling, and then they instantly put their shit back on the four wheeler and drove their four wheelers like two hundred yards, and then parked and then walked over to where they wanted to fish. It was uh holy crap! They recognized the uh, folly yeah. of their ways. Yeah. What do they say? Minimum three inches to be safe. Yeah. I don't know. I don't ice fish. No plans to ice fish. It was sketchy. No, you'd love it out there. <laughs> oh, no, I wouldn't. I'll tell you what. Um, I had Cole in a, a life jacket. Granted, if he goes in, he's, we're going to get him out, right? Yeah, right. Um, if, if I go in, I got a float suit. I got my ice picks. We're gonna be fine. We're not. We're not. Okay. Drunk. Okay. That's good the initial know. thing is you have to remember: keep your mouth closed when you go in right away. You don't want to suck so you in don't water on the go water, right. That's yeah. gonna put an end to you real quick. Yeah. I mean, I fell through a few times in my life. But what the fudge? Once on a four wheeler with my dad. Wow. He was the one in charge. I was the ten. Oh my god! Really? Ten year old at the time, so. No way, dude. Are you serious? Yeah. Wow. Uh-huh. That's crazy. The four wheel actually floated, believe it or not. What? It well, it floated upside down. The back end was still was still there as I was running back to shore. Holy hell, dude. Yeah. No. Uh huh. No, 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 no. You'd like no, it. No, no, no. You'd like it. Okay. <laughs> Let's just stick to boat. Fishing I'm not taking now. the ice fishing anytime soon. Don't worry. <laughs> Good. Let's go steal the fish first. Dude, fun show, man. That was awesome. Yeah. yeah. Good stuff. Good stuff, man. Good stuff. They're always good. 
Well, yeah. I think a lot of great tips for the for the viewers. And know their rods. God, they know their rods really. Don't good, they? Man. That's crazy. Holy hell, they know their shit. Mm -hmm. You, you got to love it when people know their products. Sure. Of course they do. That's her. That's like, that's what they do. They're, those, you yeah, know, but they just, they just know it cold. You know what I mean? They just know right. it cold. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Like, cause they fish. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. one of my favorite lures ever is a bitty bee in grass. And they're, they're, they're really inconsistent in their make. And so I had, I had uh, I had my guy Marty Burns make me kind of like a a bitty bee ish, not exactly because uh, there were some things I wanted improved. But man, he crushed it. He crushed it. Look at that little look at that little batch. I like Dude, that. I could br I could bring this up to you when those fish are shallow, and I could throw that. I'm gonna throw that with you, and we're gonna we're gonna fish that along the same flats we throw that swim bait on. Sure. It is a tight ass. You can burn it. And I want to see if it works. I like it. Yeah. I it, it's going to be because that's to me that's a that's a color way that they should respond to. Mm -hmm. Don't you think? That's a chart. Yeah. You see the chartreuse? Right? Or I could just throw that white one. Or what colors do you think they would respond to, dude? Um, the chartreuse one that I just showed you? Yes. That would be a good one. Yeah. I want to see. I just want to try it. I want to try it. You know, around... Uh, what was that island Kent had me floating around? It was really windy. And oh, the cribs Wolf, on the front Wolf in the Island. lighthouse. Wolf Island, yeah. Y you know those boulders that they kind of hang around? You know, it's a typical sure. pattern for you. Yeah. Just... Right through there. I just want to see. Burn that bitch around. See what happens. If you want to eat it. Okay. They that, will. that would be fun. I don't know they, if they will. They will. Yeah, I, they, they might not. Mm. Who knows? I just don't know, but I want to try it. I want to try I want to try it. I want to see if it works. I know you do. I got so many ideas too, man. All right, man. I got I got a whole list of them, dude. Mark, I got a whole list of them. That oh, float come up. intriguing me. Dude, that's really crazy. 35 foot float and fly. It would take sure. forever to get down. Nah. It wouldn't? Not too bad. How much, did that thing, how much did that thing weigh? I think you have to find... Uh, like That's an eighth of an ounce. One. Yeah, that wouldn't be bad. Wouldn't be bad. Anyway, it's going to be fun, dude. Try some new stuff. I don't have a rod to throw it on, but anyway. We'll figure shit out. Um, yeah... Great show there, bro. I think you could throw it on uh, your uh, like a steelhead rod. I don't have a steelhead rod, but you do. Uh, I do. Okay. All right. I know St. Croix uh, on their walleye lineup of rods in the uh, – the, uh, I was looking at uh, – because I'm going to do a little walleye fishing with, with, with floats and, and slip bobbers this year. Yeah with leeches and they make like a slip and slip and float rod uh that might work i think you want a little bit longer yeah longer rod for that technique but you could probably get away with that all right we used to do we'll that get we'll, uh, we'll get her going. going we catch you catch a lot of walleyes up here um on lake lake butamore and poigan and winnicani um really slip bobber and leech yeah. Oh, nice. Up in the grass edges and stuff for sure. That's a cool concept. Slip bobber and leech. I can dig that. I like it. Yeah. All right. Let's wrap this up, man. Let's wrap it up, bro. All, All right, right bro. You guys, we help. got it. We did good. Good show tonight. Good Everybody. show tonight, bro. Uh, next week right. is going to be the uh, Small Crush exclusive, which is on the Fix TV platform. We're going to have some good yep. topics there. That'll be next week, Monday. And That's I right believe there, right? I'm trying to get um, our buddy uh, Brandon, and we might get Jason from Power Pole uh, just to come on and talk fishing, uh, see what's cool. new with Power Pole. That's going to be coming up. And other than that, love it. Love it. 
What else we got on schedule? I don't know. We got a few others. If you guys have been watching the YouTube channel, I've been putting out some videos finally. Good job. We had some tournament action from last summer. And we had some uh, some videos with Fishing with Great Lakes Finesse. Their sneaky underspin was the last one. So I yep, want you guys to saw that. check that out. And then we have, uh, I think the next video might be, I have to look. I think it's a tournament JP and I won uh, up on Ontario the day I caught that seven and a half pounder. So that yeah. would be up. And then we have another Great Lakes Finesse video talking about one of the best days of fishing I've ever had. Uh, I've had like three top days now. Eric and I, obviously, that one day was probably uh, – that one was was right up there. Oh, yeah. That was crazy. I, I mean, it's like it seems like every – I don't know. You could that say was, last spring was – that was two years ago. But even last year, we had like a – Unbelievable. A pretty Multiple ass, days. Kick-ass day. Oh, my God. It was crazy. It, every I mean, day was oh. crazy. It was so good. Yeah, and then just being able to wind on them with yeah. the crankbaits with you was just a blast. You caught yeah. one on the die co angler die crankbait. That's right. <laughs> mm -hmm. I ain't man. I think I'm not that. interested in uh and in looking into that that mojo rod that Ryan was talking about for throwing <laughs> yeah the uh the shad wraps because yeah and the flat sides. I think yeah. if you're a pinch, I think your your drop shot rod, just a seven six ten or seven okay. foot medium light will work too. Um, seven foot medium light would be the way I would go. Yeah, yeah. I like it on the oh. seven one seven three personally. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. But I would love to see their action. See, uh, Lee in the sure. comments. Great Lakes Finesse is supposed to be coming out with new product soon. Can't get any info on it yet though. No, you can't, Lee. But I promise you. Um, it's gonna be pretty cool. Be worth the wait. It'll be worth the wait. You guys will want to grab some. Nice. I think that's all I'm allowed to say at this time. So <laughs> it's enough, bro. I don't I never know. I get so much information, Eric. I that's why I wasn't I wasn't sure if we were supposed to talk about the uh the thing. The new rod with St. Croix. Like I, I don't know, but yeah, you just let them take over. They'll tell you what it I is. I just wait. I just wait. I'm glad I get to check out the products and use some and 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 mess around yeah. with things. But uh, yeah, it's not my time to tell you all about it. I just promise you, um, they're going to be. They're really excited about the baits coming out, and they tested them last last year. Yeah, I think there's three three new baits that'll be out there so uh we're actually guys i should let you know on uh let me look at my schedule here on march 25th i know it's a ways away uh but we'll have great lakes finesse on the live show on march 25th and they'll be talking all about the new baits so we'll just have to wait a little bit Perfect. Man, Lee goes, I wish I had scented baits. I get it, but really, there's so many great scents out there that if you Broke marry you, baby. and what you have confidence in, that's really the best way to go. Broke you. Um, yeah, we. I recommend. I have my own lineup of, of scent from Procure. No, it's, well, it's, hard to be, mouth, it's hard to beat Max in. Smallmouth Crush Magic. Um, yeah, Max Scent's okay, for sure. <laughs> but if you can't and you want to soak your bait smallmouth crush magic you can go on procure direct or some tackle stores carry it or you can look on amazon aren't um, you supposed to get the uh water-based one you can you soak them for a while and it soaks yeah. up into the z-man material or something you know, that reminds we should have travis myers back on soon we should we yep should. yep if you're interested in scents, you should tune in to Bass After Dark this Thursday. Because oh. I think that's what the show is all about. Does scent really matter? Who do you know? Who, well, I guess we don't know who the guests are. We don't know because it's now, it's a, I do, but it's it's always a mystery. Do you? I do. do you? BTC called um, me the other day. I think he was. He? Yeah, I think he got confused, but. Okay. 
be. It could have been because you know just had sh- I think he shoulder saw surgery. A snakehead up here in Wisconsin. He was a little confused. Oh, he saw those eel pout snouts. Yes. And- yes, yes, yes. Yes, that's what it was. Nice. I know this Great Lakes finesse drop meno that I helped design is in Fleet Farm. What? Yeah. On close out. No, they didn't have. Oh, they mean they just cared. Out. Oh, okay. I didn't know if they just. I couldn't a find. Store. Listen, my buddy that's catching these burbot. I'm gonna tell you another little secret. Yeah. He's he's throwing the max scent the uh, <laughs> the uh, flatworm in white, <laughs> crushing them. I couldn't find Burp. that bait anywhere. Oh, I bet you couldn't. Mm-mm. Not the brown back, just straight white. Straight white. Yeah. I didn't know they made a straight white. They're not on closeout, guys. Come on. <laughs> I'm just kidding. I no, I, I just thought Fleet Farm was not like a regular fishing store. It's just like they would buy a bunch of stuff on closeout and put it up for sale. Dude, remember the max that you got on sale? That was stupid. That was such I, I should have bought everything. I know. I did. I kind of hit multiple fleet farms, but there's another dozen in this state I should have hit up. Wasn't that like $2.99 a bag or something? Less than that. Dollar ninety nine, yeah, that was crazy. Three that went like so. seven bucks a pack, right? Mm-hmm. Holy hell! And you go through tons of it. I don't know what right? happened. That was before you guys realized Max Scent wasn't a thing. Why? This did, is what I people think. not understand. This is what I heard. This is just yeah. what I heard. I don't want. I don't like spreading rumors, so I'm going to put a statement. This is what I heard. That's a good way to do it. I heard that they were very close to just getting rid of that whole lineup of bait. Whoa. Until Justin Lucas caught them good and kind of that brought crazy. that whole thing back to life. I could wow. be wrong. That's just what I heard. You might be right. Mm-hmm. How about that, man? That's crazy. Lee goes, well, I, I know something. Water. Snipers can't find them anywhere. Websites sold out. Tackle Warehouse don't have much either. Yes, this time of year, I mean, they're trying to get them in as fast as they can. Um, I'll, I'll blow your mind with a story go ahead. about scent, but not, I can't say it. It's I cannot oh. publicly distribute right now, but it'll blow your mind. Blow your mind. Yeah. All right. We got really it. Mind. All right. Let's do it, man. Wrap it up. So good show. Great fish and talk. Hopefully, people got some tips and techniques. I know I did. Always great having those guys on. They're fish heads, man. I love it. Yeah. Fishy dudes, man. It's Fishy so cool. Dudes. Yeah, it's so cool, you know, working with those guys. I mean, they're very, they're very, I mean, they reach out to me. Um, uh, mm-hmm. they're like I said, I was able to get some of those. Those new rods that are coming out in my hands yeah. already. Uh, they're very proactive with everything. They obviously know how to catch fish. Everybody at St. Croix is amazing. Like I've never had a bad experience. I've been using St. Croix since I was, since I could, since before I made the elites in 2010. You know what I mean? Like, and you know yeah, that. They like, seem like they're first class guys, man. It was it was great, and it's one of those things where. Even if I wasn't sponsored by St. Croix, I already owned a shit ton of St. Croix rods. Mm-hmm. Like, this isn't some, this is truth, man. Like, I love their mm-hmm. rods and I can't see myself using anything yep. else. It's just, it's one of those things. I, I'm with that with a lot of products that I work with, but right. you really got to believe in what you you use. And I have no problem. I, I don't, it's not some, I don't know how to put this, but. You know, there's a lot of companies that are that are there, and you, they're just they're very very innovative. You know, they're sneaky too. Yeah. You know how they drop little hints, like you know they're working on stuff. They're always working. Oh yeah, oh yeah, you got to be you know? always innovating, man. Always innovating. I'm telling you, dude, they're they're ice rods. I I'm not joking about it, man. Having like a real, like these are it's these nice. are their top of line custom ice rods, right? Um, it's they make nice a lot. have a good rod, dude. It's freaking so much fun fighting these fish on these. Yeah, I've never had this growing up, dude. Like I know That's you don't, ice fish, but they, no, I get it. Look, I I I ultralight fish. Awesome. It's cool having a great little ultralight rod. Yeah, you know, not a cheap one, man. I mean, I don't even okay. know if I'm doing this right. I I bought the, uh, I went with the Akuma. Yeah. 
Seymour 500 series reels. I don't know anything about them, but yeah, some people recommended them. So, and then we put a little tape on. I don't even know. This is hockey tape, I guess. I don't oh, know yeah. if I'm doing that right, Eric. But yeah, 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 yeah. Micro punk and Jake. That's perfect, man. Come on, shake that. Let's do it. Shake that thing. Nice. Look at that. Man, I gotta go to the good bed. stuff. All right, bro, let's do it, man. I'm delusional. Right. Until next time, see you guys on the water. Flogger rod, good one. I like that. Yeah, it could be. Heck yeah. Good stuff, man. Have a great night, everybody. Until see next time, we'll see you on the water. It's got me thinking now. <laughs> that would work for a flogger rod. Right. <laughs>